Пошли. Все в месте. Какие ваши доказательства? Кокаином. We are live. Uh, this is episode what? Eight? Eight. I forget what I wrote down. Eight. Eight. Wow. How about Eight. that? We're about to hit that milestone of 10. Not many podcasts oh make it that far. Really? Actually, I don't know. I feel like, mate, probably. Only 10% of small businesses makes in the first year. It's like podcasts. Yeah, yeah, all with the same members too. Like we haven't had any casualties. Like it's it's all of us, and it's like we have longevity at this point. Like if we can make it to ten, we can make it to a hundred, and then a thousand, and then ten thousand, and then we'll probably oh, die by then. Jesus Christ! Wow. <laughs> I have to shout out one of our viewers today. I went to um, the bodega, and as I'm walking back home, um, I see this big, beautiful pit bull in the street, and I'm like, the dogs that like, coming towards me, the one trying to, I'm like, hey dog. And so I like I lean over real enthusiastic, and I swear to you, the person goes a lion me, like just oh like me, and I'm like, and I look, I'm like, and they're like, I'm, like, you know, they have on a mask. I'm like trying to see how I know them, and they're like, you don't know me. I just watched Leftist Mafia, and I was like, oh. what? That? Yeah. That's like, amazing. Oh. Yeah, you got recognized. I love, I, I love that whenever I'm run into, um, I'm lo I look like a woman of the people. I'm always like around my neighborhood, looking like a vagabond and happily doing something. <laughs> Like also, I, I also had to laugh because I was like, if she watches Leftist Mafia, I'm always, I'm always fried, and this is so consistent with that. And she sees me in the street screaming, "Hi, dog!" Pretty <laughs> dog. <laughs> I bet they're watching right now. Yeah. So shout out to that person. That was great. Yeah, that's oh, that's, that's such a cool story. Yeah, that's okay. Awesome. So uh, just so y'all know, uh, the pace of podcasts has declined 80% from a year ago, 80% drop in podcasting success podcasts. They're plummeting. So uh, we're one of the few we're, we're like one of the 1% that are still. Wow. Still, uh, still Do we even, does anyone even upload this anywhere? Because uh, I, I this may not be a podcast. Uh, podcast. This is just a stream. <laughs> it's it's, oh. it's on the surf times podcast on. on yeah. Podcast okay. Surf there you go. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I uploaded to my channel as the VOD. I was I was gonna ask you all like, should we put this on Spotify and SoundCloud? I have an account that uh, for SoundCloud that distributes it to like Apple and uh, Spotify. I can do it too. But if it's on the Surfs, then that's that's perfect. We should probably we should Jonathan. probably do that. It's one of those things. Yeah, we should probably just do it now so that we don't like decide to do it later and then we have to like back backlog a bunch of you know what I yeah. mean. Yeah, which would probably. be a pain. Yeah. So That's what I did with my show originally, where I decided to put it on uh, all the podcast platforms. And I was at like episode 47 when I was still doing episodes. So it took me like three weeks of just consistently oh, wow. plugging oh, away yeah. every single night. And I don't think that like there's like a thousand people that listen a week. So it's still substantial, but, you know, it's not my bread and butter. So I was like, God, this is this is a lot. I should have done this sooner. So, yeah, that's that's good advice. Yeah, let's do it now. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's my advice. Okay, I thought so. Bender's, Bender's gonna be late. He's always late. I'm, As I'm, usual. I, <laughs> uh, I think your microphone isn't. Uh, isn't oh, is my mic not working? Well, is my mic not good? I, I hear you, but I don't know if it's coming in through the right one. Mm. Let me see. That sounded far away. Hmm. It says if it's the right. Uh, how does it sound? It still sounds bad. Oh, maybe it, it sounds okay to me. Yeah, it sounds good. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. is it better or no, worse no, now? Oh, oh. Now there's a back. Okay. Okay. Now, yeah. Now we're all locked in. There we go. Yeah, that's good. Okay, yeah. I'll just keep it in front of my. I'll keep it here. 
Yeah. We also have a we have a we have a guest coming on as well today, don't we? Yes, at nine o'clock. Oh, yes. <laughs> plans. Oh yes, that's right. We do have plans. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> at, at nine o'clock, we're going to have a, a guest join us, Matthew Solomon, who did a documentary reimagining pol uh, policing and talking to a bunch of different experts. So we are going to present y'all with that trailer and ask him a few questions. Look at us doing knowledgeable things for y'all. Yeah. Yeah. No, putting yeah. in the work this week. Yes. <laughs> I watched the trailer. It looks good. Yeah. For two yeah. o'clock now. I was like, okay, let me. I was like, let me bring something smart. Let me bring something smart to the table this Thursday. <laughs> See, okay. we bring the substance. We talk shit. We talk yeah. Game of Thrones, but we also have substance, folks. Okay. And to those who have said that uh, we need more structure, you're not wrong. <laughs> um, and, and I want to say we had thought about this. We had decided Blair was the structure. Blair would moderate that one episode. Blair's last episode where she was moderating. That was excellent. We had structure. So mm -hmm. when Claire comes back, she will bring the structure. Yeah. Clearly. Somebody, right. Yeah, somebody in the comments, uh, they said, I love this show, but without uh Blair, there's just no structure and she's like the glue that holds it together. I think that's that's accurate because she really does bring the structure and the organization. So yeah, she will be back, I believe, next week because she gets internet in four days. It, it crossed my fingers for her. Um, so yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. We agree. We agree. We hear you and we just want you to know structure is coming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So, um, what's going on in the news this week? What are y'all interested in? What's happened? That well, about? we can start with something uh, a f a funny video I saw this morning. This concerns uh, Mr. Mr. George Santos. He's always a uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's always an enjoyable individual. Um, Whenever you bring say up this... that, I'm always like, I'm so curious which one's it going to be. I wonder which one he's got because it's just all oh, it can go in so many directions. Here. Yeah. So let, let's let's check this out. You hear it? Good. Congress yes. Thing. Who do you think is going to win Drag Race this season? I have not watched this season of Drag Race. We had a great reply. I like this season. This season. Uh, <laughs> this season. <laughs> you got to read out. I'm not going to lie to you. This is a very likable video of him. <laughs> yeah. It comes out very likable in this video. It's, it's yeah. because at this point, he's already admitted that he did, he did, he did dress in drag. Um, though he said he's... Wasn't a drag queen, but he he did admit to to being in drag, which is weird. That that it's isn't more that that mm -hmm. isn't yeah. I guess the costume for him. He said he he was having fun in his younger years, whatever the hell his excuse yes. was. Um, we, but we all had fun. So this video follows. So there's a Twitter interaction between. Uh, I don't watch Drag Race. So I don't know these people, but he responded to somebody. I guess who was in one of the seasons, and I guess mm -hmm. they won. And he responded saying um, something to the effect of. Uh, uh, how this individual they won despite the fact that they weren't the fan favorite. So basically showcasing, you know, that he watched he watches the show. <laughs> so Interesting. This person the next day is like, hey, who's gonna win this season? And uh, uh maybe you know he lies all the time, but it looks like there maybe he's not following this season. But there you go. He's this is the thing with, with Santos. He's he is such a unique figure in the sense that I have never seen anyone lie the way that he has lied about the things that he's lied about as many times as he has and still been in this kind of position of power. Now, I'm sure there are, you know, many pathological liars that are in positions of power, but because this is such a high profile example, there is an element where it's like, this guy's kind of impressive. Like, it doesn't mean I like him. It doesn't mean that he's a good person. It doesn't mean he should be in power, but he's impressive in the sense that he's able, he's been able to lie about everything for so long. So many lies that I have lost track of that it, it is just, it, it's impressive on some level that you can be this kind of sociopath and do it so blatantly and still to this day remain in his position, which may soon change because of the, uh, the potential violation when it comes to uh, I didn't read too much into it, but the way he raised money or the way the money he used for his campaign apparently may have been illegal. So that yeah. that one thing <laughs> out of everything else is hell. Yeah, that may be the the Did thing that takes him down. Stuff? Did you hear about the Hannah Montana stuff? What? The what Hannah Montana stuff okay. I heard about. I, I said Nazi no. stuff. You said Hannah Montana stuff. No, Hannah Montana. These are separate though. I, I'm thinking they're separate, right? Or are they <laughs> <laughs> Let's Hannah start Montana? with Hannah Montana because that sounds fun. What, what was that about again? Yeah, so he apparently starred in or was one of the stars or actors in Hannah Montana and The Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. Now, the reporters who uh, wrote this article, they checked and he does not have an IMDb page, so they assume that he's lying. Although, you know, if there's any connoisseurs of Disney Channel uh, shows... 
circa 2003 to 2007. Um, maybe you can you can spot him. I don't know. I think I might go to uncancel him this episode. <laughs> it's getting there, right? I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Like, you know, I oh, might have finger. to. Every yeah. time we see a video of him, I'm finding him incredibly likable. I guess. <laughs> I, I, I haven't told you the Nazi God. story yet, though. We got the Nazi like, story coming mm, up next. Come on, Matt. Gone, Hello. Hello. Wait, How is, I mean, I'm so I'm so dark. <laughs> What's going on? My lights are. There we go. A little bit better. Marginally, almost not at all. <laughs> I'm very like orange this episode. Oh, it is very on? dark. Why is my, why it, is my it, camera... it is it is darker than usual. You look like a shadow. Uh, it's getting it depends on uh no, that's just because I'm yeah, I'm messing. Oh. I think it's the focus of the camera. I would have dressed. Oh my oh, god. There we go. Now it's way too bright. Now it's way too bright. It's like white face. <laughs> oh lord, wow, these comments. Poop killer too. I hate that I had to call you that, but you called yourself that. He should have said <laughs> Who said he's as great as a comedian? You are correct. You're actually correct. And that's why I think I like him, right? Let me tell you why I think I like him. Normally, when you get all like the bad Republicans that are clearly deranged and lying and saying all kind of crazy, wild things and stories and stories, they're normally like chaotic evil, like Donald Trump, right? Mm -hmm. Like George Santos seems like he thinks he's in a play, like he's in a simulation, like he just yep. threw it out and like it doesn't feel like he has any particular <laughs> agenda <laughs> beyond just mm -hmm. like. Ooh, this is fun. This Just is playing the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's coming off like wholesome chaos comedy. And I kind of I kind of like that. Which, by the way, is pure sociopath well. behavior. Just to think you're an actor in a play as opposed to like a real person <laughs> that has an impact on people's lives. Like stealing $3,000 from a dog that has cancer. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I hate him again. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about the dog. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, that he, that's like oh, that was that was the first story that ruined Santos for me. But I have another one that might make it even worse. Uh, George okay. Santos made offensive past joke about Hitler and the Jews, according to a new report that was released today. Patch has obtained a screenshot of a post Santos made on Facebook that made light of the Nazi leader Adolf Hitler, saying killing the Jews and blacks mostly, and then adding lol 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 lol. lol. Although it's not clear whether Santos was sincerely endorsing genocidal mass murder, uh, the vice president of the Center on Extremism and Anti Defamation League told Patch it's wildly inappropriate. <laughs> So, so that would hmm. be added to the list, and it's wild because Jeez. he's also claimed that he is the um, the son of Ukrainian grandparents uh, who died in the Holocaust. Jewish Ukrainian grandparents who died in the Holocaust. Yes, just you know what? Hitting every I, every to, note he has to there. I think you have to respect the commitment to the bit, right? Because like, <laughs> like no, right? Because I'm black, black and make black jokes and get that off. Pretending if you're pretending to be Jewish and I'm family, who who else could make it? If if anyone could make a Hitler joke, it would be you. So so yeah, so, that's true. He, commitment. He gave himself the pass. The bit. <laughs> that's an interesting angle, but I, I, like if you really are committed, yeah. You have to, right? Like, that's your people. You gotta crack jokes on your people. Yeah. Like, wow. like, so, listen. George, I can't wait till, like, they, there's an inevitable TV series about, about him. Like, I can't. Somebody's mm -hmm. gonna win. Someone's gonna win them a hell of an award. Like, you already know it. You you could see it. I could, I could see the trailer. I could see the montage and everything. Like, like oh, his rise is unlikely rise to power. Oh, I can't wait. It's gonna be excellent. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be some comedians like breakout drama role. <laughs> I can't wait. Who's gonna play Santos? Hmm. I was thinking John Lovitz, and then I saw someone already thought of that, and it's Jimmy Fallon, and I felt so ashamed. I could not wash the shame off my body because I despised <laughs> that man, and I was like, I thought I was clever. And then you I was like, Jimmy like, Fallon? Why? What do you do? He he thought of that same thing. I was like, oh, John Lovett seems like he could play a George Santos. And then he actually just did that as a sketch. And I was no, like, but oh, why did you hate him before that? Jimmy Fallon. Oh, Jimmy Fallon? Mm -hmm. Oh, Jimmy Fallon's a scumbag. Yeah, mm -hmm. he deserves no nice things. And only bad things should happen to him. Is Jimmy I, I think Fallon... should take... Yeah. Jimmy Fallon's not liked in the white community? No, he's... he's... Well, I, mm -hmm. I, I can't speak for I don't care about him community. at all. I don't even think about Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> <in the other. laughs> I hate him so much. Like, I hope he stubs his toe. That's what I'm saying, because I don't want people to think badly of Isn't me. Isn't he, but... like, an alcoholic? Like, I think he has issues. Like, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't... I'm not going to pass just, judgment. I don't know. He's just the shit... Like, he has this <laughs> shit-eating grin on his face. He's yeah. a complete shill. Um, yeah, there's he's... this... 
the definition of failed upward in every aspect of his life. Yeah. I mean, he des he deserves nothing. Yeah, that's that's pretty much the Failed story. upwards, that's it? That's it? The white man? Failed no, upwards? No, okay. It's, well, okay, that, that, I'm sure that plays an aspect. He's, he's the <laughs> SNL cast member who would, like, always break, but not in the fun break way. Like, we you know where a member all of a sudden is like, because, <laughs> like, the scene is so funny. I'm just saying like, he's whack. Like, he walks in and just, like, looks at the camera and is like, <laughs> Oh, okay, well, he's so, not problematic. You know, he's just whack. You just think he's whack. Well, well, no, 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 he I, is. I, I, I was, I was well, looking he, he it up to whack. make sure I, I have I, it I, accurate I, here, but um, uh, there is a lawsuit against his former SNL cast member and I believe his best friend Horatio Sands. Again, uh, a woman is suing him, uh, claiming that he groomed her and sexually assaulted her when she was underage during his what? SNL days. And oh, Jimmy wow. Fallon is named in the lawsuit as someone who enabled Horatio Sands uh, and is requesting that he testifies that whatever trial would come out of this. Oh, my um, God. Wow. Yeah. My radar was on point. Is this I new? It. I haven't heard anything yeah, about Yeah, I didn't this. know this about happened. that. This was over that. the summer. Uh, oh, August wow. 2022, all the articles are from. Well, the defense attorney, I mean, can't convict him off that, but I do understand how allegations have been levied against him to bring him to this moment. Like, I, I, I see. Okay. I, can, I, I, can, I can give you things that that you can, uh, uh, you know, raise against them. Uh, Hawking NFTs more so, I would say, than most people in mainstream media. Oh, yeah, that was, on there yeah, being that like, was ridiculous. You got to get these. His, his avatar on his social media was NFTs for a long time. He had all this stuff up until the point where stuff really started going wrong and people were losing tens of thousands of dollars. That's when he just kind of like quietly tried to walk away. There's that moment with him and John Oliver where John Oliver is trying to use an Alexa to talk about unionization mm -hmm. and like a little scumbag. He's like, no, 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 don't, 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 don't. And John Oliver's like, no, no, wait, wait, what, what's wrong? No, 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 just uh, Alexa, uh, can you talk to me about Amazon unions? And he's like, no, 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 stop, 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 turn, turn mm -hmm. off, turn off, turn off, turn off. And you're like, what? A, you just, you could get a taste, right? I was like, he's a scumbag. I can see it behind everything. He's just like, it's a, yeah. Do, do are, not, you, like, are you are you gonna are you gonna bring, raise him to be canceled later? I think I, I wasn't thinking of it before, but, but now, now it feels like yeah. you already knew the case, yeah. right? Okay, so. or something. I have a controversial cancellation for later yeah, on. I, I, please, everybody in the audience, please, please let us know. Yeah, no, yeah. I want to. I do think he's corny, but that's about that's that's all I knew. But uh, like the fake learning. laughter, the slapping on the desk, <laughs> like I, I just, I can't take it. Like I he's honestly, hard to watch for sure. I find him hard to watch. Yeah, insufferable. Ruffing Trump's hair. Do you remember that? That yeah. little thing. He like, gave Trump you're, a you're, like, you're adorable, yeah. like a little sheep. Like look at you. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Sucking up to Chris Christie. So tell me, are you gonna run for president? Oh my god, everybody wants to know. Shut the fuck up, you shill. Like I, I can't, I can't stand yeah. him. I didn't even yes, see that you. one. Oh my god. I, oh, it was, it was I, I so feel insufferable. Seen right now, this is, this is nice. I feel seen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. So it sounds like George Santos is up for uncancellation and Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is powerful. Like, I don't know that's gonna look for us like out of context. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I'm, I'm rocking with it. I'm here for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just quickly on the NFT stuff, like that, that was like a year ago, wasn't it? Paris, like him yeah, and Paris about, Hilton, all this NFT ago. guard. Like it, yeah, it it's crazy ago. how fast that just crap. Like <laughs> how mm -hmm. quickly people just completely lost interest in that. And I also, look, also I got to so credit crazy. my my gaming community here. I'm wearing a nice PlayStation shirt here. Uh, nice. They really tried hard to push NFTs onto gamers, and it no one. <laughs> The community has completely rejected it. So I got mm -hmm. for a, a rare moment, I have to be proud of the gaming community for saying no to NFTs. Rare like, gamer all, win. All heard, yeah. uh, <laughs> NFT sponsorships. Like I got NFT sponsorships all the time in my email. And some of them it would be like they already minted things that I never gave them permission to do. It would be like, hey Lance, we've minted a whole bunch of like thumbnails from your YouTube. Do you want to like claim these NFTs and then sell them to people? I was like, you've minted pictures of me and you're selling them and you now want my endorsement? Like this is so weird. What also, the word mint there? for something digital it just sounds stupid to me. <laughs> <I know>. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, you didn't make shit. This is just a screenshot. Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, these are JPEGs. <laughs> I, I never understood what NFTs are or were. I don't know. It's because they're it stupid. Over my head. Like, it doesn't I, matter anymore. Yeah. It's 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 a it's a hyperlink to uh, a a token, and that token has value if you put in real money to buy it on the that's, Ether blockchain. That's make believe. I I, I can't. <laughs> yes. Yeah, basically, I, yes. In, in, in I, other words, I can't yes. do make believe. Anytime that's how I feel when people start talking to me about about um the market and stuff, I'm like, this feels a lot like make believe, right? Like y'all made it real, and that's scary. Like, <laughs> like I don't I don't know what's happening it's, here, and I just mind my business. 
-hmm. It's artificial scarcity on a digital platform. You could just infinitely replicate a JPEG. You just need memory to keep doing it. But in this case, if we can invent a way so only one person can own one version of this link, then we can sell it. And that's the idea behind it. Now, now we can sell these things that otherwise would be infinitely replicatable. Yeah. It's one of the dumbest creations that capitalism has produced in, in, in recent <laughs> memory to me. I mean, it's I produced some dumb shit, but I mean, this is up there for me. And on yeah. that topic, Bender, since you follow this stuff, are, are NFTs, like at least the images aspect of it, is that still around? <laughs> like, How are the board oh, apes yeah. doing? Like, are, are people still pushing this shit? Oh, the board apes are involved in a lawsuit, right? Uh, Yuga Labs, their parent company, is involved in a lawsuit mm. now with uh, Ryder Rips, that guy who... Uh, claimed that he uh, discovered a number of Nazi related imagery and references in their art. The, the um, logo is straight out of like, when you look at it and you're like, that's the Adam often right there. That's so, the SS and the skull. What is going on? Why didn't anyone point this out? Why are people not saying anything about this? So, so here's the latest. So basically writer rips um, minted his own board ape NFTs to mock sort of mock uh, the Yuga labs and the board ape yacht club. I, I sort of didn't like that he did that because it's still promoting the idea of NFTs and he got paid money for, you know, for selling these NFTs, even if they were mocking the board apes. But because he did that, Yuga Labs sued him for trademark infringement uh, because basically these are just straight up like board apes that he like slightly altered or whatever. But when they did that, they didn't realize that as part of the court process, uh, the lawsuit process, Ryder Rips, who he, they're suing, would be able to ask for information too as part of discovery. And so then they tried to get out of it. They tried to get out of their own lawsuit. And the judge <laughs> wouldn't let them do that. <laughs> and it just came out, I think a few days ago, that they don't actually have the copyright to any of the bored apes that they claim to have the copyright to. And that they might be in big trouble because as part of the NFT sales, I'm talking about Yuga Labs, like Board ABI Club people. As part of the the NFT sales, they claimed that if you bought a Board Ape NFT, you would have the copyright to that NF to the Board Ape for as long as you owned that NFT. Well, it seems like no such copyright existed for them to provide that access to provide that to. <laughs> And they've since changed their terms of service to remove any mentions of copyright ability uh, stuff. Um, but it's people, so there, uh, I read an article where you know copyright experts, uh, legal experts were saying that this could be an issue for them if someone who bought board ape and a board ape NFT wants to pursue this. Wow. Isn't isn't that what Seth Green was like losing his mind over because he made yes. a whole cartoon series based on the board ape mm. that he lost? Yeah. yeah so it seems it like he doesn't he have that to begin with. Yes. <laughs> oh I mean, I, I and believe like, and Eminem and Snoop too. They like they did a whole cartoon music oh, video that slash was so embarrassing. A song. Oh was, right. So they, the worst they don't own the copyright lives. to any of that. Oh man. <laughs> I mean, I believe, I believe, like when you're when you're an artist and you create something, like it's just automatically you have the copyright of it for it, like because you created it, even if you didn't file the legal, uh, you know, information. I'm I'm not an expert here, but I'm assuming that being that Yuga Labs are not the artists, then it causes more of a, a gray area there. Mm. And also, the art isn't all. These are ten thousand images of which are very similar to AI each other art, with right? just yeah, yeah they're just like there are there are ostensibly bored apes that look exactly alike with almost exact like they're almost exact replicas minus a slight change of a prop they're wearing like and there's there a bunch are of racist are, combinations too yeah there there are two people <laughs> out there who have an exact same ape the only difference is one of them are wearing like sunglasses or something in a place where mm. we so like who would own the copyright for that ape if it's the exact same thing and you wouldn't have a separate copyright just because one of them is wearing sunglasses and one of the that's images. true i could make a cartoon called mickey mouse with mickey mouse wearing sunglasses it's like ah it's it's, it's mackie mouse and he's got he's got sunglasses that's a different thing i mean that even changing yeah. his name honestly just <laughs> saying, yeah, that would have been more work <laughs> yeah this one's not the same because he's wearing sunglasses no that's not how it works right <laughs> The Samsons, they all wear sunglasses. It's a great I mean, like uh, Steamboat <laughs> Willie just entered the, uh, just entered I know, and, uh, and public Disney domain. Pushes it every time. But Wait, people actually, have to be, though? but people have to be very careful because 
the the design of Steamboat Willie is not the same as the modern design of Mickey Mouse. You cannot just go out and start printing out uh, a black and white Mickey Mouse and claiming he's Steamboat Willie. Steamboat Willie is a very specific design. You can pull it up if you want to compare, but you have to be careful with that stuff. I was reading all mm. about that. Well, luckily, I have no use for Steamboat Willie. So. <laughs> yeah. I can make him the mascot. And it's got to be the Steamboat Willie created in 1928, I believe. Uh, Mick, uh, Disney has since reanimated Steamboat Willie numerous times and updated how he looks. So you, you have to be careful there, too. Mm. So in other words, just don't don't mess with Steamboat uh, Willie, folks. He's Willie alone. Yeah. Just like if you want it's to not play worth around it. with it, just just air it in your local uh, library, wherever for free, because you don't have to pay Disney to air it because it's public domain. But I wouldn't I wouldn't mess with it because probably Disney will come after you if you so much add a single strand of hair to Steamboat Willie that looks too much like Mickey Mouse. Mm -hmm. The lawyer says uh, derivative uses of Steamboat Willie version of the character may be in certain cases used by others, but Mickey Mouse will remain the property of Disney for the foreseeable future. Right. So you got to be mm -hmm. careful that your Steamboat Willie doesn't look like Mickey Mouse. Like how mm. that Winnie the Pooh horror movie that's coming out, that yeah. Winnie the Pooh does not look like Disney's Winnie the Pooh. They had to make no, a lot of – yeah, yeah. So they had to be careful not to even uh, make it look similar whatsoever to Disney's current version of Winnie the Pooh because that's there's, a completely separate copyright. There's a Winnie the Pooh horror movie coming out. Yeah, because oh, yeah. Winnie the Winnie the Pooh mm. has entered. Oh, when they so killed hold on, that's no when they killed Eeyore first because he's black. Y'all see that? Y'all seen that? Wait, you what? Is it out? I have I haven't seen it yet. In the trailer, Eeyore's already dead. It's like rest in peace, Eeyore. <laughs> really? Isn't that? a sign? Yeah, <laughs> like they didn't even make it. Think, think about that. Why Eeyore dead? I mean, we know because well, he probably killed himself because it's Eeyore. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all want to explore why Eeyore is depressed? <laughs> Y'all want to explore why Eeyore That would be depressed? my guess. <laughs> all, right, all his rich ass white friends live in the hundred acre woods and he lives on the outskirts of the community and they spend all day frolicking and they doing their little fucking adventures in a hundred acre woods and no one sees him till the end of the episode after they finish frolicking and shit. They go over like, hey, Eeyore, why so sad? Literally as nightfall, as my boy been sitting there all they wishing he got invited they treat you like shit like yeah that's like the shit out of Eeyore that's why you're sad you're sad because he's poor and he lives alone and his white friends don't invite him to the all-white gatherings god damn it <laughs> that's why yeah us is for Mm -hmm. you our guest is here folks um yes our guest is here Ole, do you want to introduce him? him i mean i could add him now let hold on hold on oh look you already Hi, Matthew. Hey, quick. Oh, well, I was coming too quick. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> oh, Matthew. Way too quick. I was trying to get this gathered to do a very responsible and give you the professional introduction that you deserve, but they were too fast. Now you have to deal with whatever this is. <laughs> All right. We are so excited to have Matthew here. He is our. Like we are first like guest we're bringing on to show y'all a trailer for a documentary that he did that is really important. And we're going to give him an opportunity to um, answer some questions, tell y'all a little bit about this documentary and this work. So this is Matthew Solomon. Hello. Hey, nice Matthew. Nice to, this Welcome, is, uh, Matthew. Thank you. It's surreal because I watch you guys all the time. And now I'm like, oh, my, my face is on here, too. So it's a great oh, name, awesome. by the way. Oh, nice. Yeah, right back at you. <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm used to this being on shows with other matthews and matts mm -hmm. yep. so going forward it'll probably simpler if everyone just refers to me as binder so we don't get them confused. i do anyway so that works yes. out for me mm. there you go okay, <laughs> okay. Awesome. that makes sense if you want i can bring up the the trailer now yeah. so we have a kind yeah. of yeah let's watch that oh, let's sure watch the trailer. let me bring this in America has never been a place where we had democracy and equality and freedom and liberty for all and justice for all. And all we have to do is get back to that. Race in this country has never really been removed from the political dialogue. Because we won't reckon with our past, because we will let older people say, oh, that's so old and 
let's not talk about that anymore. Slavery was so long ago. We haven't had it for 200 years. This is, you know, not realizing that we never reckoned, we never repaired any of it at all. Police are violence workers. You know, we've been sold this false choice of policing or nothing, which has been used to terrorize people into accepting policing when there's a whole long list of things that they would rather have that they know would help address the problems in their communities. When we say abolish the police, we are saying we do not want policing as we know it to exist anymore. What people don't realize when we're talking about abolition is that we're really talking about the fact that we want you to be, be a decent person. <laughs> that that it's going to require that you relate to people. We created a report and it's called Defunding the Police, Defining the Way Forward for HRM. Like the myth is that we need all these people in jail all day, be running around the streets, and that's not true. So I really try to shift us from believing that defunding is radical to recognizing that what is actually radical is investing billions of dollars into policing. So like not agree that defunding the police is this radical lefty, like communist, Marxist, whatever, that it's actually practical, it's good social policy, it makes sense, and here's a little plan. This is not some kind of abstract, utopian envisioning. This is a very practical, programmatic intervention. When you begin to think differently, and you begin to look at people through the eyes of the humanity in all of us, and you know, sort of that love for humankind, your thinking and your approach to the work starts to be very different. Very well done. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. So this is amazing. I really wanted to bring you because obviously we are having a lot of conversations. You see it a lot in the news, whether it be as just a political pawn or a reason, you know, they're not giving it its due when talking about defund the police or abolition. So it's great to see people doing the work of compiling, talking to these experts, because it's right. It is, it's a policy initiative and it makes sense and it's reasonable, but they don't, they don't present us with these experts. That's not the research they're presenting us with. Instead, they just kind of throw it out, you know, as a radical, ridiculous thing. They don't engage it on a substantive level. So it's amazing that you went and did this. So I wanted to give you an opportunity to tell us about it, how you decided to do this and what you really learned from this. Yeah. Th thank you. Thank you for that. Um, you know, this the the short version is uh, I went back to school during the pandemic to get a master's degree in public administration so that I could better use my my privilege and my access along. I was doing a lot of uh, uh, conflict resolution consulting before the pandemic and traveling. And so, you know, I wanted to go back to school, get a degree and and to, you know, enhance what I was able to do. And so through the coursework, you know, this was summer of 2020, you know, 2021, um, I was applying uh, the issues with policing and incarceration and the, you know, homelessness to my, my coursework in public administration. You know, what, what makes communities sustainable? What makes right. communities work? Um, why are they set up the way that they're set up? And so uh, when it came time to do my final project, instead of writing a paper, uh, one of my advisors was like, you know, you're a filmmaker. Why don't you do a film and and they're like you know it could be like a short 10 minute you know sizzle reel or something and i was like if i do a movie it's going to be like a real movie and so that's what i set out to do and i you know originally i was thinking four or five people to interview and then and then it was like oh i need this perspective and this other perspective and people were you know i would interview somebody who would refer me to somebody else and it just kind of grew into this thing which i'm really uh, happy about because I think, you know, there's a lot of different perspectives. It's not just activists. There's, you know, the district attorney of LA County. Uh, there's, you know, USC law professor. There's a sociologist, Nikki Black, who's a, a friend of mine. Um, Gina Viola, who ran for mayor in the city of Los Angeles on an abolitionist platform and came in third. Uh, Hawk Newsom, Black Lives Matter, New York. Dr. L. Jones is a professor in Halifax, Nova Scotia, who wrote, co-wrote a 200-page report on how do we defund the police? And it was commissioned by the city of Halifax. So, um, you know, all, all and then uh, Hadia Kennedy, who's a former 
uh, LAPD officer in Senate Devermont, who's Mr. Checkpoint, you know, who films police and has, you know, right. been following him. So, you know, I wanted to get all those perspectives. And I think, uh, you know, the feedback has been that, that the documentary really makes the case for what it's like, why it's like this. And, and here are the steps that we can, you know, take that are actionable and make sense to actually have like safety for everyone and stop, you know, funneling money into this, you know, you know, policing and incarceration, you know, that, that's just like, you know, money out the window instead of actually investing in people. Um, yeah. That is amazing, Matthew. That's a really productive use of your time during the pandemic. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. In the course of conducting all those interviews. I played video games. <laughs> uh, in the course of conducting all those interviews, Matthew, what would you say stood out to you or surprised you the most? What was the that you heard that you learned? Yeah. So you know, going into it, so in the course of the master's program, I wasn't an abolitionist. I was something needs to change. You know, something drastically needs to change. I was coming from consulting. So I was like, well, maybe if the police just knew how to like listen better or something, you know. So mm -hmm. through the course of my research, I started reading abolitionist work, Maryam Kaba, Angela Davis, of course, you know, and so got to the point where, OK, now I'm like all in on abolition. And so the messages of Hawk Newsom, uh you know, uh, Nikki Black, even George Gascon, who's not an abolitionist, you know, by any means. Yeah. Like all, they were all talking about love. You know, when you when you view another person through the lens of love, you're going to care about them. You're going to care about, um, you know, supporting them. And so it's it's a much different perspective than the punishment bureaucracy that we live in. So love was was like the thing that was like, oh, that's what this is about. That's, that's funny that you say that. I have an essay called Love and Abolition, and it's about that. Mm -hmm. That basically fear is the emotion. As much as we talk about emotions and feelings as though it's something that should be outside of this, so we shouldn't move on our emotions. The reality is people, emotions is what motivates and dictates all of the things and decisions that we make. And mass incarceration is fueled by fear. That's what mm -hmm. that's about. And in order for us to create or imagine a different world that actually addresses the root causes of issues and tries to help people in these under-resourced communities, we have to move from a place of love. So it's interesting that you say that. Also, that makes me think of this too. Um, I too was introduced to, to books in my eventual journey. I became an abolitionist. And for me, it was Our Prisons Obsolete. Which book mm -hmm. did you read? That, you that was the first one. Yes. That what, first one. That's what did it for you? That, that's, that, what you that's what started it. Yeah. And then I was, in, I was in a class and I was like, yeah, I'm on board with this, but what do we do with the violent offenders? Right. Yeah. That's that, that narrative. And, and one of my classmates was like, you should read Mary M. Kaba. We do this till we free us. Mm -hmm. And then when you're done with that, come back and we'll talk. And so yeah. I read that. And then Alex Vitale's book and the police. Yeah. I saw you had that. Alex. Yeah. So yeah, all of that, great. you know, this is beautiful. That was honestly, that's, that's very amazing work. And I'm really glad that you did that because it's good to see like there being resources that we can point to because at some point this was, abolition has always been here. Although even mm -hmm. in these last few years, it's kind of appearing to people as though it's new. This is a much larger, but it's I think it's been um, inaccessible to a lot of what our everyday people. It's been something we know about in academia, you know, in organizer spaces, but there haven't always been these resources that we could point to and pin to people. So this is beautiful that you did this, that you did the work, that you put in all this time and energy to create this resource we could reference to and show people. So I'm really glad that you were able to come here tonight so we could show, we could show yeah, our audience. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. I feel and like I this is, oh, oh no, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I just want to say regarding academia, one of the things that was frustrating to me was there's not a lot of, uh, you know, published work in journals on abolition. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. that was something as I was doing my work, it's like, I, I, I really want to facilitate the conversation or to bridge the conversation is probably the better word. Um, for like, if not this, if not police and prisons, then what? Right. You know, and so right. that's that's, you know, as a filmmaker, because my background is in filmmaking, you know, I saw that as my way to use my skills, you know, to be able to to do this. If mm -hmm. people if if people were at home watching this and are wondering what's the first thing they could do if they're interested in learning about abolition or how can they learn more or get more involved, what would you where would you direct them first? Where do you think is a good starting place? 
Um, well, I mean, my website, uh, <laughs> for, for the movie. You had to go ahead and plug that, Matthew. Awesome. Uh, plug it. But, plug but it. I, no, I, I appreciate it. I have it. a page of resources Hell yeah. on there. Oh, yeah. great. But, you know, I would, I would say connect with your local Black Lives Matter chapters. Um, if there's, you know, any abolitionist organizations like Critical Resistance uh, LA, Critical Resistance LA uh, sponsored a screening. I know that they have chapters in New York. Um, you know, that would be the place is really just to get in with the, the groups that are in your area. Yeah. Um, you know, and, you know, reading the books and, 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 you know, my goal with this film was to have it be another resource where it's like, okay, you want to know what this is about here, go watch this movie. Yeah. yeah. Mike. Yeah, no, Mike. I was just going to say, I feel like this documentary comes at the perfect time because what, has really bothered me lately is and this is kind of like a pretty common liberal phenomenon is this instinct to run away from slogans once the right wing inevitably demonizes them so the one that comes to mind is defund the police that kind of emerged organically out of the 2020 black lives matter protests and then you see it get picked apart and then whatever you know momentum was there for it gets pushed away and then we get into this dumb conversation about oh well what if they phrase it this way or that way mm -hmm. just putting aside the fact that regardless of how you phrase it there's going to be opposition to that regardless so i feel like to have this as a resource is really important and, and one thing that like drove me closer towards abolition and i'm still learning but i would probably fall into that camp um is that the the story of uh, tyree nichols for example like for that story you can't w look at that story and not question the system because it's it's not the easiest explanation, right? Like when you see Derek Chauvin have his knee on George Floyd's uh, neck for nine minutes, you can attribute that to, wow, that's racism. But when it comes to five black cops beating a black man for three minutes, you know, white liberals can't necessarily just say, oh, well, that's just racism because they can't. And it gets people to think about it as this whole system is inherently messed up. Yeah. Like re it's the system itself. It's the way that cops are essentially this this militarized force who's overseeing subjects and not you know protecting and serving. So I feel like to have uh, the documentary as a resource right now is really critical because I feel like there's this huge retreat that I've seen, at least in my like bubbles that I that I've seen where. People are running away from defend the police or, or defund the police because it doesn't like pull well when that's missing the entire conversation. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I also think people need to remember that like social justice movements, like they they are emerged in the minority. They are never going to be the majority in polling support. That's not how it works. Obviously, you get grassroots organizations, you get resistance, you get um, because they're resisting what is the, the majority, the status quo. So obviously, yes, the majority of a country is going to support what has been the status quo that they've been indoctrinated to believe. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean you will thwart mission. Like that's that's the point. It's why it's a fight. It's why it's an uphill battle. So that is mm -hmm. very much so something we need to um, start taking into consideration. And you're right, Mike. Um, people people don't really understand systemic racism and what it means for something to be systemic and they don't get that they're mm -hmm. like oh well they're black ops the system this is embedded we're being educated the same way you can internalize anti-blackness as a black person the same way a white person can and if you are in an organization that teaches you to operate a certain way teaches you to view people a particular certain people and certain populations a particular way and that violence something people need to understand and i think we have to start, myself included, like changing how I go about this in discourse and talking about police brutality is people take police brutality to be the instances when they see the police kill somebody rather than like, what is how violent, and I think Alex Vitale does a big, a great job of talking about this in End of Policing, that violence is actually a part of policing in America. That is a part of it. That's why you see so much brutalization. That's why there's so many settlements, so many lawsuits and all these. That's why there's qualified immunity. That's why that's there. That's why it's there because that's a part of it. So that's something we got to talk about. If that's in the entire how it's set up, and I think you know, later on, we'll probably talk about it. I saw somebody in the comments mention talking about Cop City because I think this will eventually mm -hmm. segue us there to how violence... Yep, Lance. Oh, sorry, I wanted to ask Matthew a question. Um, something that comes up frequently, especially when you're talking to people who advocate for police abolition or stuff like that, is do you have concrete plans to put some system in place as you advocate for something such as getting rid of the current system? And uh, or, or the practical answer, like you brought it up very briefly when you were talking about Angela Davis's book, um, when you get asked that question, like, so do you want violent criminals to just roam the streets, right? Mm -hmm. Do you, do you 
come at that outside of just the like well just from a philosophy this is more about like you know changing uh a system that incarcerates people uh with a punitive desire rather than like reducing those numbers but do you do you like do you have something that you've spoken to people or interviewed people about in terms of a transitional proposal or, or one that would be politically effective yeah and you know it's, it's interesting because that was another thing uh in the documentary that was you know i didn't know what i was gonna gonna hear in response to questions like that and you know the abolitionists that i inter interviewed were you know all like this is a long-term project you know this is not something that can happen overnight if the police were gone tomorrow um we'd have all other kinds of problems because we don't know how to not call the cops, you know, if our neighbor's trash can is in the wrong place, you know? Yes. So, so there's a, it's, the answer is it's a multi-leveled uh, solution, right? It's not just throw people in cages, it's resources, it's education, it's, um, you know, reparations, it's, it's, uh, you know, communities coming together, people learning, how to talk and listen and communicate with one another, which, which was most of what I was doing with my consulting, you know, before the pandemic, it's like really teaching people how to connect and empathize with another person's lived experience. You know, it's like all of that stuff needs to happen. And then, yeah, if you have, um, you know, a violent offender or something, you know, like a, a crime, there, there would be systems in place with the communities to deal with that. That might mean, removing somebody for a certain amount of time. Um, I think, uh, 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 no, uh, the DA guest, uh, George Gascon had mentioned that he's like, you may need to remove somebody, you know, temporarily, but 95% of people who are, uh, you know, going to jail get out, you know, mm -hmm. so, so there has to be support. There has to be, um, I mean, it's, it's a shift in how we view each other also. <laughs> I mm -hmm. think what we have to, when we have these conversations, the the premise is wrong, right? When people mm -hmm. say, the people say, oh, you know, if we if we get rid of prisons, if we get rid of this criminal system that we have now, how are we going to address harm and address crime? And I think we have to acknowledge that we do not use that. We do, that's not what our criminal system is here for now. That's not what we, 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 you would be pretend that that's how we address crime or that's how we address harm, but it's not, right? We actually, the, the truth of it, and it's not hyperbolic language, the American criminal system, 2 million people incarcerated, 400,000 of those people have not had a trial, have not been convicted of anything. American prison system is a business and it's a business that is very much so slavery that's fact that's why there's the carve out in the 13th amendment you're enslaving people and you're making billions of dollars 11.6 billion dollars to be you know more exact off of those people so it's not there that criminal system is not there to address the harms and to prevent them in fact it's operating as i just did an interview recently and someone it was asked specifically because the politicians discussed it like how is it going to affect our business these people losing their jobs you know trying to decarcerate they're very much so invested in in churning people throughout the system. That's why it's the same communities, the same under-resourced communities, police like this, and they get these collateral consequences that'll never get them out of poverty. And so it continues and that fuels this system. So I think the first thing we got to acknowledge is that we're not addressing it. That's not meant to address these issues. All of those issues, every social ill, everything that we you know claim to condemn, that we slap the book at people about is being reproduced by this system. And that is intentional. So that's the first thing is what we would need to do is for the first time as a society actually start to say, hey, how do we actually address these issues? How do we help people? How do we help solve these problems rather than just, you know, condemn it in rhetoric, but in actuality, just produce more of the same violence and harms. And I think the second thing is abolition is not Abolition is a vision of tomorrow. It's a vision of the future. No one is under the impression that they're going to close all the courts and all the prisons today. The whole idea is, all right, currently we have mass incarceration because we've invested billions and billions of dollars into addressing crime and harm this way. But if we actually began to divest from this system bit by bit and this money that we keep putting into the into mass incarceration and policing and we instead gave it to those under-resourced communities, we gave them the money for housing, for mental health, education, we would see that over time, this 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 system we would start to rely on it less in and of itself until we get to that place so it's that that's why you know people will say things well 
oh, we need reform, not realizing that, yeah, the reform efforts that matter, those are the abolitionists pushing that, right? Like when I talk about bail reform a lot, it's because that's the steps. Those are the bricks that we begin to divest, right? As we as we get bail reform and we and we um, begin to decarcerate and we begin to move like this and where we don't have a criminal system, because it's a policy choice. It's a policy choice to use incarceration and prison to address these different things. And it's a, a policy choice America deliberately made. Always remember, like, we didn't always have mass incarceration. That was a deliberate explosion that happened when you got a president who made the choice we are going to address it this way so instead it's all right all these different and reform efforts it's not that there's a problem with reform reform is necessary all these different reform acts that actually reform efforts that actually divest from the system is necessary to get us to that abolitionist place so that's what it's about it's like oh if i if i actually give people what they need you're going to see less of those harms you're going to see less of this you're going to see less people relying on the police so mm-hmm. on that on that point what do you view and this could be a question for either matthew or Ali or, or both of you what is the, the the biggest barrier to any progress in, in this area? Is it lack of education? Is it big business? Is it capitalism? Is abolition possible under capitalism? Like these yeah. are, I think there's a lot of, you know, uh, barriers at play. What do you view as, as maybe the biggest one that needs to be, um, you know, taken? I think it's how we are indoctrinated. I think we're indoctrinated to believe in the system around us. And so even... We, we're taught, right, that justice is synonymous with policing and prisons. We're literally taught that as little kids. It's like, oh, you need to know 911. Make sure you know that number. You play cops and robbers. Cops are the good guys. The bad guys are this. And we are fed that throughout society. So what happens is people develop this mentality that anybody in the criminal system or that has contacts with the criminal system, they are bad. They are deserving of that. They did something to be there. That ultimately, the system is just. The system is about producing justice. And when you see these stories and these examples of uh, it not doing that rather than think of that as this is how the system is working. This is routine. This is what's happening all over the country every day. People think of it as a system that is otherwise just and meant to produce justice is making a mistake. You know what I mean? So any, any real serious change or any effort to really, um, dismantle the system is met by people who only their only information they really have of the system is that it's just the first time they're really hearing they're not getting this information because we have a society that's very invested from keeping people from knowing things because when people know more times change right that's what we've watched we've seen in our lifetimes how much social consciousness has shifted because we're exposed to different things and that's why you see now so much of a concerted effort on the part of politicians to keep certain information ban the books keep that out the schools keep it all together because they know if people learn more about it they will oppose it. But what will actually happen is if they don't learn the information about the system, if they don't know how the system works because all they get is propaganda fed to them in the media, fed to them entertainment, fed to them and everything. What they'll hear is they'll see a George Floyd and it's like, oh, that's really sad that that happened to him. But they don't oppose any of the fact that his community is so over police, why police were called in and why police brutalize in general. They don't oppose all of the different things that made it possible. So to me, the, the biggest barrier, or the biggest issue is the way our society is just indoctrinated around propaganda. And I think our best push to that is is education, I think. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. There's the, you know, there's the the financial investment in locking people up and and militarizing the police. And then you know, that was one of the things also the, the propaganda part, when I really started to, to look back at the show, you know, I'm, I'm going to be 50 in March. So, you know, I grew up in the seventies, eighties, nineties with all the cop shows and Stallone. Like I was watching Cobra. Uh, it was on cable yeah. <laughs> like a month ago. And it was like, Holy crap. It's all propaganda. It's he's the guy we call when nothing else works. And, you know, he kills oh, yeah. this guy and the reporters yeah. like, who are you to be judge and jury? And and so he grabs the reporter and he's like, tell that to his family, the guy that, that you know, and it's, it was like wall to wall, just like we need yep. the worst of the worst to protect us from the worst of the worst. Yeah. So, and yeah. I think, you know, what's funny and insidious about propaganda. People will think, oh, it's that they're not showing you the brutality and the violence. No, it's worse than that. Cop shows and law and order and these things show you police that break the law nonstop. And they show you them being violent, but they justify it to you. Like, oh, they needed to do that. Like, they treat constitutional requirements as though it's impeding the police's ability to, to be good. Like, you know how much propaganda is embedded in everything? That was actually the narrative that I just fed to you just there. You would think that came from something that, that wasn't law and order. That was the Chippendale Rescue Rangers new movie that just came <laughs> I swear to God, I was in this house like I can't have nothing. And then in that moment, I was like, wait a second, with Chip and Dale the ops the whole time? <laughs> and I'm like, wait a second. They are the Rescue Rangers, like, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yes. And then you watch him watching Darkwing Duck. I'm like, oh my God, he's the ops. I'm like, the, bro- the Powerpuff Girls. Oh, I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah. These are all my favorite shows. The Powerpuff oh, Girls yeah. are the main police brutality. Oh, girl. 
<laughs> the, the, Bojo Jojo. Wait, Tailspin. Movie Tail, Tailspin was smugglers, weren't they? Wasn't Tailspin smugglers? Like those? Okay. At least they were real ones, right? Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. we got one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We Tailspin. We could keep Tailspin, but yeah, <laughs> okay, <that's you>. <laughs> in everything. It's very much so in everything, and I, I think about that. Like people think you're like it is funny when you use like cartoons and those kind of examples, but it shows how deep it is. If you watch mm -hmm, Pop of Girls, right. and it becomes okay for the mayor to click the button the minute they see Mojo Jojo. All Mojo Jojo is doing is grocery shopping, but because they've decided Mojo Jojo is a criminal, Mojo Jojo get Mojo Jojo gets his ass <laughs> white meat every time. Every time they see him, they just come in like All not right. so fast, Mojo Jojo. <laughs> and they just throw him in jail, no crime, no charges. Grocery shop. He said, "Please, girls," and they beat him up. But I'm like, oh my god, that's how it comes to be. Um, so yeah, I think to me, that's the the greatest impediment is the propaganda. <laughs> Yeah, there there was um, L. Jones, Dr. L. Jones mentioned uh, the statistic that 30% uh, of, I'm sorry, 30% of all content consumed is crime related and 50% of fictional content is crime, you know, police and crime related. So it's yeah. like, we're just, you know, immersed in it. And then, and then there's the way that, you know, news programs handle you know police issues and incarceration issues and you know alex vitale says this in the documentary the police are almost always given the benefit of the doubt and not really questioned and not really pushed you know they get the time. first statement out too because like mm -hmm. you know, when you're a reporter and you're doing that 24-hour news cycle it's the first thing you could print right away the official yeah. police statement says this this this, this yeah this. their narrative yeah. is presented they as teach fact. that in school too like i went to school with like a with a with journalists and that they're they're taught to like take the police report as like gospel like that's what they like it's wow. it's an it's in every level of education this and, stuff it's embedded and that's, that's the issue right is like and we think that we live in this objective world because people when you're educated like that you think you as someone who would be educated in journalism they're telling you that you think that's the way this is the objective by the time you get criticized on twitter you're like what do you what do you mean i'm following the professional this is the yeah. official because all they've ever taught is that police police narrative is the fact police are this objective arbiter of justice rather Rather than an interest group themselves or people whose word needs to be questioned um and that's what happens i, I think about even like with being a lawyer like there's certain things i'll realize now like as a defense attorney like oh i went to a prosecutor mill and i was being educated like someone who's going to a prosecutor mill but it's being presented to you like oh this is objective this is the way and so you think oh i'm just being this way and it's we, we we and we're not taught unfortunately we're not taught to be to push back where we're taught we're educated in a very consumer way our society wants mm -hmm. us to be consumers so they want us to just take everything at face value i'm sure um i don't know if i'm the only one who's been kicked out of classes before for asking too many pushbacks too many <laughs> too many uh <laughs> too many follow-up questions but they don't want you to do that that's not what they want so i think that's the greatest. That's what we got to be doing as a society and that's why this is really great matthew this is an amazing contribution to this this effort this movement this discourse and thank you so much for joining us yeah thank you thank you yeah real quick where can we uh find the documentary uh so the website is reimagining safety movie.com and that has all the information we're having a our west coast premiere next friday february 3rd at the san pedro film festival which is in the la county area and so you know big festival there's we're gonna have a panel discussion afterwards and then uh I'm having uh, uh, impact screenings, you know, all over the country that, that we're setting up with different organizations and colleges. Right. So, yeah, that always. Uh, yeah, my work on it. Thank you. Right. <laughs> um, so, you know, if you go to the website and um, you can subscribe and I'll, I'll send out information and then on, on social media, uh, reimagining safety movie is uh, my Instagram. And that's that's the best place to, to follow that also. Thank Great. you so I'll, much. I'll link that below the video uh, as well, so it's easy to uh, to get to. Yeah, thank you. Thank uh, you, Matthew. Thank yeah, you so much for joining us. Thank Matthew. you for joining. Right. Yeah, I really appreciate that. That's what I call structure, people. Like <laughs> <laughs> that was our first professional <laughs> professional interview. <laughs> right. That was a yeah. tight segment. A segment. Yeah. That was right. a, yeah. That was like a tight thirty minutes too. It was perfect. It was like. <laughs> yeah. I was like, he's already leaving. What's going on? Why does he have to go? I'm liking this conversation. I'm, I'm really proud of us. Like we were professional. We were very professional there. Like that was great. We Thank should you. we should pat ourselves on the back. Yeah. Great. That was really Thank good. Thank you for uh, being the leader there, Ole. Yes, look, yes. Okay, now for foolishness, somebody start. <laughs> <laughs> Time to be silly. Yes. Yes. So, if you all wanted to talk about this, we, we could be opening Pandora's box, 
but I watched a video from Lance yesterday, uh, and I cracked up all the way through. This was oh. the uh, Libtardo watch, one. Like, watching a video from Lance is opening Pandora's. Oh, we're into, oh, we got yeah. We... <laughs> I, I wanted to circle around it before I dropped the name, but it was so fucking funny. Yeah, circle um, around it. Yeah. If if, yeah. if Lance wants to give us like the rundown of the whole situation where it got to the your Jimmy moment. <sighs> It would make my life. It would make my fucking life. Well, fill me in. Okay. All right. So I, I, I'm going to give, I'll, I'll pass this one off to Matt at one point because Matt really did do a lot of detective work and sleuthing and put in the hours. So I don't want to take away his glory of discovering Lib Tarda 1. No, there's no, For the there's uninitiated. No taken away, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll hand it off to you because that part's even, even more hilarious. But for the uninitiated, Jimmy Dore's uh, well known to have a burner account or two or three or four. We don't know. He's got a lot of, a mm -hmm. lot of accounts on Twitter, likes to, likes to, you know, sometimes use those accounts to speak about himself or his wife is using them. Right, uh, Matt? I'm not. I'm not off on that. It's either him or his wife. Uh, pretty sure it's him at this point, but it could yeah, be his it, wife it, for some of them. Yeah. Either way, it's it's stuff you'd expect. You know, when you're starting out, the game's the game. It's hard to make it in social media, so you maybe start a couple accounts to validate yourself every now and then. You'll be like, you know, I could write something out and be like, yeah, and then use my other account to be like, Lance is right. Lance is so great and handsome. Everyone loves Lance and talks about how cool he is too. You know, that kind of thing. So that's that's the equivalent of what's going on here. Anyways, I start feuding with Jimmy online because I made a post about how he was laughing like first off he laughed at rebel news rebel news is a far right uh breitbart like equivalent in canada you should not ever have to give it up to rebel news don't even if they're like you know going after uh you know the head of a pharmaceutical company they're going to ask them what about the 5g magnetism they're not going to actually ask good questions so they did that to, uh, to greta Thunberg, uh and they asked a whole bunch of silly questions you know like uh, why is it so cold here what about that the global warming you know things like that and i said it's so sad that jimmy was laughing at this as a gotcha and so you know jimmy's fans must have shown him he replies and immediately like you know it's like oh blah 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 you, you lied about me i pushed back you know you're all liars over there and then he went back and forth with some other people in the thread and eventually forgot that he was using his actual blue check mark jimmy door account i will bring i will bring the tweets up they're right, hilarious right. yeah it's so fucking good <laughs> But he's he's straight up yeah like <laughs> so I woke up to this I'll have you all know I woke up for and I'm like in my bed and I'm scrolling oh through God, and then so all of a sudden I saw this and I was like oh, oh, no, no you didn't just write this in the third person oh, oh no. no this right here this is why I don't have an alt account this right here this is this is the thing you cannot live down this shit isn't this happened even no. one of my friends like a figure on it and i was just like i will I say like, see i will I just, say though potentially in his defense maybe he's trying to be the character in seinfeld who always called himself jimmy and his name is jimmy. jimmy and it creates this whole issue with elaine so maybe that's what he's trying to pull off here i don't know maybe he suddenly started to refer to himself in the third person yes you know, exactly. who knows? if we're being charitable here <laughs> Why, like, <laughs> your Jimmy has me fucking screaming? You know what's awesome about this? He takes ratio so seriously. Like, I watched the segment the other day of his. He was saying that he was proven right about COVID because of a ratio that he himself helped make. I was like, look at this. Their own fans are turning against them. This proves that I was right. It's so good that I was proven right on all of this, you know? And now he's just getting blown out of the water. That's so embarrassing. That's why I just curse people out. <laughs> my whole chest like i don't understand like why not just be like fuck you lance <laughs> like clearly like, <laughs> like, I, I was just yeah i was like fuck you block like, like, I'm like, oh, here trouble. i'm gonna bring up this video by the way but no sorry keep keep talking no that's also well, embarrassing I... that you don't have like a main fan that could have taken that flagship for you like you know no, what i mean like why do you sure have to do it like i'm sure you have fans who will who will come come at lance be like Oh, hey, and, and they defended him afterwards. They were like, oh, what, Surfs? Like, you've never had someone else use your social media account? I was like, no. No. <laughs> no, oh, Richard no, Famous, do you think I have, like, a PR <laughs> person? Are you kidding me? <laughs> so wait, this is when Elaine meets Jimmy. And keep in mind, when Jimmy's talking, Jimmy's talking about himself. He's Jimmy. Look at me. Look at me. Come on. I'm stretching right in front of you. Hey, a smile. <laughs> we made contact. All right, one more stretch and then go talk to him. Hey, 
You know, Jimmy is pretty sweet on you. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a young Jimmy, oh, yeah. too. <laughs> Jimmy's been watching you. <laughs> just Jimmy's type. Oh, really? <laughs> Jimmy's new in town. Jimmy uh, doesn't really know anyone. Oh, well, I'd like to get to know. Jimmy would like to get to know you. <gasps> <laughs> Anyways, eventually, you know, it continues on and she finds out that he's Jimmy. <laughs> it's her reaction. You're Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, wait, no, that that was Jimmy's friend. Uh, wait, no, that's Jimmy. <laughs> it's it's so good because the whole reason that he ended up doing this was because Lance had shared a clip of him uh, with the Rebel News and and, uh, and uh, Greta Thunberg, and like he was defending them, basically harassing her for twenty minutes about the dumbest things. Like he was basically pretending as if Rebel News had legitimate questions to ask to Greta, as if they weren't trolls. Like they're asking her to basically explain the difference between climate and weather. So she naturally just disregards wow. what they had to say, and 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 she went went along with her business. But one thing that I have to say, um, uh, with regard to the Libtard O One saga, I do want Matt Bender to look into some additional accounts because so i'm not sure if you saw this so the vanguard responded and uh they shared a clip of jimmy Dore kind of um running away from uh some conversation that he had about ukraine and so you know they were kind of juxtaposing that with the greta thing where he was criticizing greta because greta wouldn't a answer basic questions wouldn't defend her position and so the vanguard was like well what about what about you doing this and so they shared that clip on twitter and then Jimmy Dore did not respond directly, but he went through their thread and retweeted individual replies to the vanguard of them criticizing. So these retweets in particular are very sussy, and I feel like those could potentially be the next Libtardo one. Libtardo 2, might I, might I, uh, might I say. So there's some <laughs> stuff for you there, Matt. While I have you all here on this, right, because obviously I was late to the... Look into um, it. Yeah, um, I was late to the Jimmy Jimmy Dore. I only barely know who he is now. I have some information, and I usually just try to keep my. But I know, I know this. I have realized that anybody who likes Jimmy Dore seems to hate us. <laughs> like, um, yes. like if I hate us, I mean y'all, and now me too. So <laughs> no, might as well just. I apologize. <laughs> You're welcome, Mole. <laughs> no, I be getting so much like so. I catch so many sprays because y'all. <laughs> Oh, they just be shooting me all week. I'd be like, I don't even know these fucking people. <laughs> it's because they're literally right wingers, and yeah. like I, the most of them, I think know that. I, a few of them maybe don't mm -hmm. realize it, <laughs> but I no think at this point, it. most of them realize what the hell's going on. They, they do oh, know. Yeah. There's there's a meme maker <laughs> who loves Jimmy Dore who makes memes of all of us, and there was one video of Salt Bay sprinkling us into a toilet. And my my face that they used was like smiling really loud. And then they they photoshopped Jimmy's face on Salt Bay, Salt Bay laughing, and also Tucker Carlson and some other right winger. I, I can't remember who, but like these these are right wingers. Like they know it. Maybe there's a few leftists who think that he's left wing left wing at this point. But I like it's got to be a small. So left that they become right. You know what I mean? Like they don't even realize it. Like horseshoe they, theory come to life. Yeah. Yeah, cause... like in that in that clip that he got mad about, he was starting to like question out loud if the reason Greta was doing what she was doing was because of autism. And I was like, this was like yeah. what the right what the right was putting out there. What like six years ago, I want to say, was the kind of like super yikesy takes that they would come out like, well, you know, old. she's actually not way because of the autism. Like, what the fuck are you saying right now? He's not you very know? old. Two thousand twenty three. Yeah, he, is. he looks very old to me. Yeah, but there's, there's old people who aren't assholes. Like Bernie Sanders yeah. is not like yeah. doing this right, shit. Right, but like, you know? why is he on these people's head? Like, I don't really. It seems to me the only time I see him and don't know. Listen, don't nobody. Please don't get me in no bullshit. Don't tag me this man. I don't know him. I don't know <laughs> personal. But at the only time I ever see anything from him or any mention from him or his world, it just seems like just like. Just trying to like dunk on other people that you allege to be on your same side of the fence, but you're like this litmus test. So it just feels like that all the time. It just mm -hmm. always like petty, really petty, petty things. Like, oh my God, like the door, like the whole, I was right. Every time I see him, something about him on the timeline, it's like, he said yeah, that. I'm like, what is, I'm like, what? Yeah, we have a tally somewhere? Like, why are you? He can't score for himself. <laughs> Every time I see him, I'm like, okay, guy. <laughs> Like, and that's why, like, anytime someone brings up the idea that oh, the left is they're too, uh, you know, they're too puritanical, they're they're purists, they're all this thing. What pops in my head are people like Jimmy Dore who pretend to be on the left, 
but are on the right make money pretending they're, they're on the left all they do is attack the left like you're never going to get rid of those people like you can criticize the left all you want about how pure we are or whatever like i'm very welcoming i want to educate i i don't expect people to be you know to be born with the right with the right position i used to be basically conservative like i understand people can grow and change people like Jimmy, you're always going to exist because there's always going to be that that incentive there to try and make money off of pretending you're on the left. Whereas, like, is there any, is there a right winger in media that's like really well known who's who only attacks the right? Like, does that does that exist? I just <laughs> find it so there's funny. no fucking there money to do that. No, there isn't. No, no, Good that's an question. excellent point, David. There isn't. There isn't. You only ever see that from our side of the, whatever yes. kind of business. You only ever see it from our side. It's this content. Why are you calling yourself a leftist? Oh, there are liberals. The right. There are this. Like, and I'm just like, it feels so unproductive. And I I think about this. I'm like, are you actually producing content? Are you actually advocating for yeah, anything? Are you just shitting on everybody else's? Are you just responding to what they're doing? And that's what it feels to me like, oh, people know Greta, so now you're shitting on Greta. Oh, this, da da da. Mm -hmm. Every time I look, I see you're like dunking on some other commentator, and I'm like, are you saying anything worthwhile if all you do is monitor what the other commentators say and be mad at that and shit on that and galvanize your support or lack of around that? Like, why are you trying to make yourself some kind of little demigod? Like, bro, just say what you have to say and shut the fuck up. Like, you know what I mean? Like, people need to go with it and they don't. Like, but I don't understand the need to, I feel like. If I think about it, I don't know many people that are like staunchly in the commentator space and abolitionist in the way that I am. And I'm not like every time something policing happens, I'm like, let me kick y'all in the chest. I'm not on Twitter like, yeah, yeah. I fucking told y'all. You're a real abolitionist. You're a fake yeah, abolitionist. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. it's like, no, it's like, we're oh. again. Vindicated. Hell yeah. I think like it would be different. I understand. I would, I would get it more if they were having... If we weren't the com, if you're not the people that are the face of something, and you're making a larger conversation, if you're just saying something to your friends and private school in the com, like, but you're the person people are going to for discourse and conversation. So now you created, you wasted time and energy, and a bunch of people are now focused on some stupid shit, like criticizing somebody else or commenting on that, as opposed to actually running on, like advocating for anything. It's just so annoying. Then, like, my mm -hmm. favorite is when they bring someone like like Marjorie Taylor Greene or Trump and be like, they're further left than than AOC is. It's just like some. <laughs> <laughs> bullshit. David, David, I just sent you a video in, in, in the chat about that very thing. It's it's Did only you? one okay, minute let me long, see. but it, it, it's it's exactly about that. We, like uh, I had a, mole a molecular biologist on the show. Sorry, I can't speak right now. A molecular biologist on my show yesterday. Uh, his name is Dr. Wilson from Debunk the Funk with Dr. Wilson. Everyone go to subscribe to his YouTube channel. He's super super based. He debunks all the like the right wing conspiracies on vaccines and COVID and science. Yeah, this shit. Um, but he he, fa he found so many things <laughs> wrong with what Jimmy Dore was doing here. It was like it was monumental thing after. Thing I love the fedora. Yeah, you know, that she's out lefting the left all the time. She was out lefting the squad on Ukraine. She's out lefting them on COVID, and she's telling the truth about COVID. So she says, "Remember when they told you not to take ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine to help you with COVID?" <laughs> That's all this can muster. When he's smearing people who are right, <laughs> and this guy ratioed him, he got he said he told me said yeah, you should be ashamed of yourself. He got 117 likes. This guy's only got 30 33. <laughs> <laughs> his own followers are done with this bullshit. <laughs> bullshit, 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 bullshit. You should be ashamed of yourself. So that's why I'm showing you this because it's encouraging. Because for two and a half years now, I've had a million pound weight on my shoulders, wondering what's going on in the world. No one will listen to science. No one will listen to logic. You should be ashamed of yourself. Ivermectin works like a motherfucker. Oh now, my! Now I can't say it works on. He is COVID not still saying this in 2023. Wait, you got You should be ashamed of yourself. That's nice. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. No, no, respect, no. Respect. He, he, I'm not even no nobody get mad. This is a this is gen this is just genuinely uncanny. This ain't even me trying to roast him. But he don't he don't look just like rumpled silk skin from once upon a time that don't look the same way. That's, that's not the same man. That's not the same man. Like, is that like that? <laughs> just imagine the fedora on him, right? <laughs> Right, like that was like the fedora on top, yeah. Yeah, he, he tipping his fedora to Marjorie, my lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I cannot deal with it. 
<laughs> People need to understand, though, that he has to pretend to be on the left in order for the grift to be lucrative. Because think about someone like Dave Rubin. Dave Rubin, as the gay conservative, has real utility. He can say, no, this homophobic bill isn't homophobic. But, like, what does Jimmy bring to the right that's, like, unique? He can be brought on as the leftist to explain to Tucker Carlson how the left is wrong. But once he just says, no, I really am a conservative like all of you, then the, what's left? Comedian? He doesn't do comedy anymore. Like, the only comedy yeah. is Mike McRae doing hilarious impressions that Jimmy Dore reacts to. That's the extent of his comedy career. So, like, he, his only utility is to be the leftist. That's the one thing that sets him apart, which is why he hasn't just come out as a conservative. But, I mean, he's deeply conservative. He literally agrees with the, with the right on, like, nine out of ten issues. I, the, the one thing that he gets credit for is he supports Medicare for All, although he didn't support the candidate again, in 2020 like, who supported Medicare for All, but you get what I'm saying, right? Like, regard, like personal, personal beliefs don't mean shit when you have a platform. Mm -hmm. It's how do you use your platform? Right. How do you use your power? Yeah. You can, so I believe Medicare for All. Yeah, but all you fucking do is shit on every single person that I, like, supports it. Like, mm -hmm. I'm a case for it, yeah. No, dead ass though, but people, people didn't like, I was on Rising a couple days ago talking about, um, the police, LAPD killed Keenan Anderson. And I basically said that to Robbie. Robbie's always like, oh, I'm skeptical of the police. He says that as a blanket statement, but then the whole, any conversation we have, you're just caping for the police. I'm like, no, you know, I'm like, no, you're not. She like, let's keep it real. Like, we need to stop allowing um, commentators, representatives, and people to just make blanket statements about what their belief is. And then everything contradicts it. And we mm -hmm. just, it's like, well, well, how could you, you can't just, and, and, and the problem with it is they say it so that it lends it credibility. If you say, I'm skeptical of the police, but every time you cape them for the police, they're like, well, they, they're skeptical of the police and they're on the side of, so you know what I mean? And that's the same way. It's like, oh, I'm leftist. So when you're shitting on everything left, it's like, oh, well, that's not the same. Then people lend it more credibility. Like they're being a regional, a reasonable, rational mind that's assessing this objectively because they announced that they are, they are skeptical, even though, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have politicians do this too, like like a uh, Josh Hawley pretends he's like a working class working class senator. He he worked in in uh, he was a a corporate lawyer, I believe, and now he's he he just introduced the this stop uh, uh, Pelosi Act, I think it's called, where it's about stopping uh, uh, stock trading, like in, in Congress, which is fine. But when you call it when you call it stop Pelosi, you're not really going to pass it with a Democratic Senate, are you? Like. <laughs> It's just, it's so clearly just an, an attempt to try and get, gain attention, gain, you know, notoriety, get, get on camera. It's yeah. not any serious attempt to actually pass anything. Exactly. I saw the serious thing the Republicans are trying to t uh, pass right now, and it looks absolutely absurd. It's like uh, sales tax to go up to 30% and then all other taxes eliminated, like estate tax, payroll tax, like that, that's the actual proposal. And I was like, wait, you're going to eliminate a state tax. You're going to eliminate payroll tax. I'm assuming corporate tax is probably not far away. And then pass everything off to the consumer who now have to pay a 30% tax. Like, this is going to be one of the most regressive tax proposals. Yeah. I think I've heard someone say outside of, like, a Looney Tunes cartoon, right? Like, why... Why, why, why would that anyone is so hear blatantly like, anti-worker like that yes. <laughs> to pre and yeah. for them to pretend otherwise and to have morons to go like go along with that messaging is so insane but they they know they know they know their base is dumb enough to to fall for it you know how many you know uh uh you know every day run of the mill republicans i saw defending the plan online by going but it eliminates the income tax well your income tax is not 30 <laughs> income tax not 30 percent uh you're gonna be paying a lot more all gas all year think about this for a second like yeah like, groceries everything so working working everything people oh, working people buy a lot more than rich people do like it's just that simple yes. like the percentage will hit you a lot more uh than it will hit them like they don't have to worry about uh 30 percent tax on the things they buy because you're the one who's buying everything and they're the I ones that to... have all the assets that have you know properties that that would be taxed <laughs> like <laughs> that would no longer have to be taxed yeah I, I also to, uh... also oh, sorry, yeah. uh, i forget what the percentage is but there is a, a large percentage of people who um get a lot of their income taxes back come tax season uh, you would not be getting anything back from your 30% uh, sales tax. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you're going to keep all those receipts and write things off. You're not doing that if you have like a, a full-time job, There's you know, unless you're a freelancer or something. Did you see the discourse that's been going on recently? Uh, because uh, 
someone online started going to New York uh, subways and being like, I am uh, keeping track of every single person who's jumping the till right now. And I've already oh, noticed I saw like, that more. It wasn't New York. It was uh, people. It's uh, DC. Oh, sorry, in DC. Uh, yeah. Okay. And then, of course, there's this massive section of the internet that was just like, uh, people celebrating this obviously don't want to live in society where social contracts are a part of the game. Oh, uh, they hate, like, capitalism. They hate neoliberalism. They hate people participating in blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, oh, and they were also being like, all the lefties who say that they want to support like a Nordic model uh, don't seem to realize that everyone here is breaking the social contract and the fa fabric of society. I was like, you're doing this in reverse. There, There is no social safety net for them. I mean, like, I don't get the whole let's vilify the poor people online or people who even are doing it maybe they can afford it but it saves them six dollars a day and that's a big difference 10 days in a row 60 bucks means a lot who gives a fuck like we should be talking about uh why aren't their needs being met in other ways not being like i cannot believe another three people are following the rules <laughs> mm -hmm. i'm so mad about this. more throw more police at it that'll save us you know, money like <laughs> police in there uh, beat them, it's, make them pay. it's crazy yeah, we we, uh, we talked about this earlier today on the majority report when I was on, and it's just so infuriating uh, because, A, like, the average person, the everyday working person commuting to work, they don't care that people <laughs> are jumping the turnstile. No. Or they don't care. They really don't. Like, they just don't do it because they don't want to get caught themselves, but they don't, like start yelling or following someone who does jump to turnstile going you should have paid they don't care yeah, they mind no their own cares. business they don't care. in fact i bet if they <laughs> see someone who gets caught getting a ticket they're probably thinking to themselves oh better you know be more careful next time you do it <laughs> like just watch out next time <laughs> like because you know what we we all fucking do it when we're able to let's just be clear whether you're a, a teenager in high school or you're a 90 year old person in new york city when that emergency door opens so someone with a wheelchair or a mother with a stroller can get by, everyone who's going to pay that turnstile just moves on over to go through the emergency door for free. Everyone I mean, fucking does faster. it. I'm, everyone I'm fucking does it. I'm people in line. I'm not, I'm not doing it because I love crime. It was just trying to... Like, and the, the those trains are moving regardless. Can't... Like, those trains are... Might as well have more people on them. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Those trains like, are going to move. And like the MTA here in New York, at least, they 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 just use this this rhetoric as the reason behind why they want to raise the fare uh, another twenty percent next time around. They do this every time they want to raise the fare. And what do we see that happen to the service itself? Nothing. They don't put that money towards the service. They just pay the people involved at the upper uh, echelons of the MTA more money. That money doesn't go actually into the service. You have you guys ever seen if if, if you if you uh, who lives in New York here? Uh, there you go. Uh, you, <laughs> are, have have you ever seen? I was pointing to that square. <laughs> after 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 the fair raises, have you ever looked around and went? Oh wow, the stations are so much cleaner and nicer. They must have, <laughs> yeah, they must have put that towards upkeep and yeah. Never, never, never. never. Like no, yeah, just this, it. just this week, the Long Island Railroad announced that the uh, the Jamaica station is now stopping at Grand Central Station. The Jamaica uh, uh, station trains are now stop going into Manhattan, are not, now stopping at Grand Central for the first time ever. It is the first expansion of the Long Island Railroad in over a hundred years. <laughs> How many times have the fairs been raised? Fair raises, fair raises in the did past that. 100 <laughs> years. No fact. Absolutely, you're absolutely right. We spin it now, Bender. Like it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh if if people are jumping the turnstiles, it's because the fair price is too much for them. It's too high. And what do you want them to do? You're going to say they should uh, go to work, get a job. Well, how do you think they should get to fucking work? work. They got to use the trains. Then mm -hmm. it's like a chicken and the egg <laughs> scenario if you're going to argue that. You know what the, the, big, the, the best solution here is? Uh, the MTA should be free. The trains, yes. the transit, the public transit should be free. How do you yes. pay for it? Well, you tax the the wealthy New Yorkers who can pay for it, and you and, know what's going to happen? And tax on energy companies as well. You you know what's going to happen if you made the public transit in New York City and other ma major metropolitan areas free? You would get 
all the businesses in that city coming out going, holy shit, revenue's way up. People are visiting our locations more. Why? Because they can get there free. They don't have to factor in the extra cost of travel. So they're able to actually, A, go there yep. without worrying about that cost. Mm. And then B, maybe even spend a little extra money if they did have that money. I mean, yep. it would be such a great thing for everybody for public transit in major cities to be free. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm reading the comments. I've been, that's what I've been doing at this. Um, so I just wanted to take this opportunity to say Mudslinger888 is back. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> yo, I really the examined the mudslinger. comments. All jokes and aside, my man's, my man's is a clear racist at this point. <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's what it is. Um, but this time, because I, and I really, I really examined this also. If you actually look at the time, I talk a lot less in actual timing on the show than y'all. Well, there are a lot of segments y'all are talking about that I don't even, I'd be here like, the air goes in my head. <laughs> I breathe and I speak, and this man is mad in the comments. Talks about nothing else. He goes, The loudmouth show starring a me for fuck's sake. So this time I just want to say, <laughs> Much Slinger 888, please suck a dick. Go to hell. <laughs> you, go. You, do, you do not have to watch this show, and I do not have to hear your mouth every week. Please kiss my black ass, okay? Thank you. Fuck you. Why and be sucky? No, not again. On your side. Fuck you and the eight people behaving with you. Y'all can all kiss my ass. Thank you. I found Mudslinger. I found him in the chat. My man's a real hater. Like, I'm like, oh my god, what is your problem? What am I doing to you other than bringing jokes and peace? But like, oh my god. Men are being silenced. Okay, we can't stand for this. Yes, I've had enough. Can I put him on blast? Is that okay, David? I found it. Yeah, yeah, go. Do what you need to do. There he is. Get him, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. That's, that's what I was And also, I saw somebody earlier in the comments say that the, their dream collab is for me and Hassan to do something. I want you to know, Hassan oh, yeah. has reached out to me. We're working on it. It'll happen. Nice. Make happen. sure you shout out the podcast. Yeah, tell we, need the, <laughs> we need that audience over oh, here. <laughs> tell Hassan to come on the leftist mafia. It'll give us the life that we need. He's not gonna I, you know what? I'm gonna raise it to him. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it to him for real. He will. I, I think he would do it. What I really want to get, what I really want to get, is I want to get um the great David Simon, the creator of The Wire, to agree to come do an episode. <laughs> That's what I want. That's what I really want. That'd be talking. pretty cool. I in yeah. college I did like a a, a paper on because I was like a huge fan of The Wire back in like the early 2000s. I did like a paper on David Simon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His views now. I, he's tweeted some things. I'm like, I don't know if I agree. Yes, with that. I, 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 I ratioed him before, but I don't think he realized that when he followed himself. <laughs> like, like, we're gonna pretend like that didn't happen. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah um, I, we had like a yeah. fight on Twitter once or something. I forget what it was about, but yeah, we went back. I'm like. Yo, I, I I like you. What what's what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, I heard you know, I've heard he gets very upset when people like bring up copaganda or anything like that or yada yada yada. Mm -hmm. But you know, I want to bring him for the purposes of let's talk the wire. Like I, I want to bring him in the least adversary cool. the wire information possible. And if, if there's anything negative, I'm gonna tell him to his face is that I don't care what you say, season two is not not I don't care what you say. I yes, it's necessary, but you're not going to convince me that it's more. You're not going to manipulate me. I won't be gaslit like this. <laughs> <laughs> He's just too boring. I don't care what nobody says. The last couple episodes, though, there's like some payoff for like those a couple of those characters, and it's like, oh, okay, you know, there, there's. A, I, I agree with you. It's it's pro it's probably the worst. It has to be the worst season. What's but... that with like at the boatyard or some shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Discover? The shipyard. Okay. Yeah. It's the white people season. It's with the Polish people and at the dock. Um, yeah, right. Like, I didn't like that season too. Oh, I remember a lot God. of the, like a lot of the fans hated that season because it was just a complete change from from the first season. And then, yeah. it, then it went, season three is like a per, one season. like season three or four. My favorite. I I, yeah. I go back uh, between the two, but yes. no. Um, season two when I was watching The Wire, so it was like okay. At this point, I know I think I'm alone in this. Uh, D'Angelo Barksdale is my my heart, my heart. The way I love you. <laughs> about why nobody cares about him and his fate as much as I do. I'm sick. But anyway, season one ends and I'm dying no, to find out what happened to my boy D'Angelo. And then the season starts. Now imagine you've been watching the show and there's been nothing but Negroes. <laughs> and then the show starts. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I was like, HBO? <laughs> man, I got HBO. Put on something new. I like turned it. I was like, back? What What I click? What happened here? I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Oh, it was, it was the docks was like it was so long. I was like I was like this is what is happening. Oh, this is bamboo. I have been I, I have been had. I have been hoodwinked. What is going on? Like I mean, his reasoning is that the show's about the city of Baltimore and each kind of area, like like 
basically like how Baltimore functions and all the corruption within it. So yeah, for him, the shipyard is like a, a big piece of how some of the drugs come in and, and the kingpins and that kind of thing. Like I, I get his reasoning, but in terms of the execution, yeah, I, I know uh, it's, it's yeah. it isn't the mm -hmm. best season. I get, I, giving people yeah. like Stringer Bell and Omar and characters like that, and then all of a sudden it's like the docs. Like I, yeah. I, I totally, yeah. I, I totally know that feeling. There's payoff though. Like you know, he keeps you going season two. You're like, uh, uh, and then season three, it's like, oh, I waited for this finally. <laughs> it's like, yeah, season three, three is very, very good. Yes. Yeah, season that's true. Good. Who are your favorite characters, or who was the saddest death to you in the wire? Okay, so if it's in the every, wire, every, viewers, viewers anybody, Ender, have you seen the wire? The wire. I, mean, yeah, like I feel like you're wearing hard. Uh, I don't want to spoil things already. for you. It's all right. I'm never <laughs> going to watch it. It came out in 03. It is literally regarded as like the best TV show of all time. If Bender cared, he would have watched it. <laughs> like, true, yeah. I guess that's true. Like, I'm just not a big, like, just not a big TV person. Do not care. You see? So oh, yeah. Bender's not even I, hearing us. Who is your favorite? And what was the saddest? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I'm not sure if this is the, I don't know if it's the saddest, but it's the most shocking. And I, I watched this, I watched the show twice the second time with my friend, and I, I was. Per, I, I, I was waiting four seasons or I think it was four or five seasons. I think it was four seasons for this moment because I wanted to watch his face when when Omar got shot and it was just completely out of the fucking blue. And it was a little kid wait, that wait, did you like it was just you were looking at him. Uh, like, were you like it was like, <laughs> it was and and after like reading about it and like like why they did it that way, I thought it was brilliant. Like no, basically it is. His reasoning was like it's you know it doesn't have to be like some because they're they're building up this thing where it's like it's it's uh you know Omar and the cops and I yep. forget who else, who's who's a third individual in the in that whole triangle there, but it's like oh there's gonna be a showdown showdown and then it's like he's fucking kill out of nowhere for no reason like it's just it's so, yeah <laughs> it was, just, it was they, fucking brilliant yeah they said they wanted to show that like no matter has as how much lore is around him and how big of a character this is that once you're in this game you are disposable and you'll meet an end like yeah. that. You don't necessarily get an end as grand as you were. That shit was crazy. Also, side note, Michael K. Williams, rest in peace, is Bahamian. His mom is Bahamian. His mom is from the island mm. that I am from. Mm. Love that. Um, I yeah, will that say, though, no, sorry, the, 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 saddest, the saddest death for me is uh, is Wallace. Bodhi. It's, it's been a while. Bodhi. But yeah. Bodhi, he, yeah. I feel like there was, like, you know, you know, he had that conversation with, with McNulty. It was like things were looking up for him a little bit, and then it just, like, he was just done. That, that broke my soul too. That very much. Yeah. I watched The Wire like on a regular basis. So this is all real fresh for me. <laughs> like, I like, love The Wire. I'm obsessed. Um, God. I, I don't remember a lot of this. It's been so long. I watched it in like 2014, 2013. So it's been a really long time for me. Mike, you got to watch it. It's a good rewatch. Yeah. Go yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. up there with shows that I've rewatched a lot. And now it's yeah. in, like HD widescreen. Like, I, I've, I've only seen it in like four by three. Like, I haven't even seen the widescreen version. I've just watched it twice in, in the old mm. like TV version. But um, no, it's yeah, the definitely good rewatch. Now. New TV show is really good too. Baltimore. I don't know if you've seen it. I started so. Huh. So, what's the name of it again? Oh, sorry, we own this city. That's it. Yeah, we own this city. I began yeah, watching yeah, it, really and for good. me. Because I cover a lot of this stuff now, it's it's hard for me to get into like real life drama, like dramas about real life around this shit. Because it's like I, this is my job. Like when I'm mm -hmm, watching, it's like enough. I'm working right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, so fucking enough, depressing. Who said Snoop didn't die? Snoop did die. What you mean? Michael killed Snoop in season. Oh yeah, that was one. That was that was so one of the most too. iconic that scenes. Was, that was, yeah, how that, I, I think that might have been the yeah. saddest for me. I think that would have been the saddest. saddest for me. The saddest when Snoop dies. Yeah, yeah Snoop that, is the psychopath. Snoop, Wait. when Snoop, the psychopath okay, died? Yeah, but, but, right, but right, as a good. character, as a character, she was enjoyable. Snoop is a... <laughs> no, I got the characters. Right, before. right, right. Let True. Snoop is a raging psychopath. If there's anybody who needed to be put down, <laughs> Snoop, Marlowe, and Chris. Snoop, Marlowe, and Chris were the boogeyman of the hood. They needed to go, okay? They, they, they had real gangsters. Oh, no, I'm not thinking there. of Snoop. Hold on. Yeah, no, Snoop is when Mike pulls the gun on her and she and she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. my hair look, man. He's like, you look good, girl. And he shoots us. Real, it's real iconic. Um, but yeah, nah, Snoop's death can be sad. Iconic, but sad. No, she needs to go. My girl, <laughs> my, my girl's just in the hardware store, just examining which screw, like which 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 screw oh, That was the season opener. That was the season, the season, season opener, opener. for uh, yeah, that, that was and, good. And the actor, the actress Felicia Pearson, you know, she wasn't a real actor. They picked her up off the street. Like yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, Wallace is what I'm thinking of. Wallace's death was the saddest death for me. Sorry. Yeah, that's yeah. season one. Yeah, that, yeah. That, yeah. yeah. That I, I I remember that scene because that one actually singed me. Where it was like you know friends killing friends, but they were like they just seemed so young, and I was like, this is so savage, just standing there like, oh no, no, and you know what's gonna happen, dude. Uh, that was. I break my heart and soul. I think you know what I think is really crazy about the whole show. I think is a, 
is sad when you think about it is the moment at the end where they go and see um Poot, who is Bodhi's right hand, and Poot is just working in Foot Locker, and you realize, like, wow, mm. just a, this would have dissolved just a little bit longer. Like, these men, all of them dead off of this thing that just ended. Poot just now working at Foot Locker, and Bodhi dead. Like, if Bodhi had just turned around, or Wallace is like, yeah. For lives gone to something that's just over, Avon and them is just not there anymore. And I'm like, wow. Meanwhile, all your boy's dead. Okay, we got to talk about something that Matt Binder has both seen. Yeah, all right. I'm, <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. Keep going. Keep going. Not Paul and spoilers are so ongoing. It's not called spoilers when a show has been out like 20 years, bro. Like, you can't. Like, I'm pretty sure the wire. Not... Season uh, five ended, I think, 2007. I yeah, and, and wait them. long enough, and you'll forget the spoilers. Like I don't remember half the shit that they're talking about. I so. watched that, sh the I watched that shit in my in my college dorm where I was downloading like the FTPs and shit. <laughs> the Wire <laughs> came out twenty one yeah. years ago. Wow! Holy That's shit! Yeah. What year was it? Started. it, it, it right? Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, and the, it, it ended, I think, oh seven. I think. Yeah. So... My, my buddy was watching the Lord of the Rings, the second one, the movie trailer, and at the very end of the movie trailer, they reveal that obviously uh, Gandalf comes back. He's like, "Whoa! Spoilers, Whoa! Spoilers. Hold on! <laughs> spoiler! <laughs> spoiler!" <laughs> and someone behind him right away was like, "The books were written like fifty four years ago, asshole!" <laughs> I was like, oh, fair, fair. <laughs> "Unbelievable!" <laughs> spoiler. Yeah. No, you want to hear a story though? Okay, so um, obviously, so I'm a big. I love Harry Potter. That obviously J.K. Rowling is the devil. It's it's unfortunate that Harry Potter was written by no one. Um. Anyway, I love Harry Potter. Um. So when she the very Latin... overrated, honestly, I think it's very overrated. But continue. <laughs> <laughs> you took the way out of the sentence. <laughs> Whoa! No, it's just don't very I say, I'm completely neutral. I've never very read a overrated. single book or watched a single movie. I have I've no idea. One. I, I really. <laughs> you know what's crazy? No you, idea. You said that, and tears came to my eyes. <laughs> like, like, it's very, like, very overrated. What? Overrated? You read the books and you feel that way? I read the first book. Oh, you know what? Don't talk. I don't want to hear that. You read the first book and it's overrated anyway. You have to read all of them to appreciate. You know. You know. I see. I hate. I can't even. I can't even gas the writing no more because she got to be out here being a transphobic bigot. Oh God damn it! I'm anyway, gonna, I'm gonna share a video with you and it's gonna and it's gonna ruin your world. I'm so sorry, but, but I'm gonna there. do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna send you Sean's video and it's gonna change all. Oh, of Sean's you. video is yeah, good. Video is so good on Harry Potter or on yeah. Yeah. J.K. Yeah. Rowling the books. On the books, no, on the books. I, it's just not that yeah. it's just, it's i don't get the hype over it it's like it's okay it's nothing special it's nothing groundbreaking it's nothing crazy what you mean um, it's not groundbreaking what you mean you i mean it there? doesn't deserve all the 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 adulation that it receives it's just not that great <laughs> who's your who's your who's your, fa who's your favorite character is it cho chang <laughs> that's a character's <laughs> name. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! G guess, guess what her, guess that's what her not, nationality not is. By one. the way, yeah, that's not even the worst one. Oh, no, 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 it gets much worse. <laughs> it gets, it gets much worse. I hate each and every one of you. Um, <laughs> did you like? Did you like the Jewish goblins running the bank? You are not. <laughs> you are not going to ruin this for me by pointing out no, all, oh, all, he, all, he, all the. He hasn't even and mentioned the fact that there the is a uh, a race of people known as slaves in the book, and their freedom. Only one character talks about actually freeing them. That's Hermione, and Hermione is mocked ruthlessly by the other characters for it. And at which point, eventually, that whole plot Plotline is let go. They like the house elves. That entire thing, they let it go. She's like, we should probably not do this and have slaves. And then all, every other character is like, they actually prefer it because yeah, they it's like being like slaves. They, they like being yeah. slaves. That that same logic. Yes. Yes. I let y'all have things. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, you could. You could. You I, could I enjoy know. Harry. I'm the the house 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 house. I will take. I will suck joy from every motherfucker. <laughs> oh, I will never let y'all rest. No. We all have problematic Those are theaters, right? That's it's fine. Yeah. That's the name of the Death War. Eaters, I think. <laughs> I will say, I, I think, I think. I mean, this is my opinion. I'm not sure how the rest of you feel. I, I think it's ridiculous to to criticize people over liking art that oh, yeah. may oh, have yeah. been created in some by some shitty person or some bad. You know, I, I just think it's yeah. It's, that's not going to solve any problem. Like, if you don't like something, like for example, the new Harry Potter game coming out. If you mm -hmm. don't want to buy it because you know uh, J.K. Rowling's a transphobe, then that's fine. Don't buy it. But it, I don't think it makes sense to ridicule other people who want to play the game just because they want to play the game. Like it's, 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 
that's my opinion. Well, I, uh, I, but... I I agree. It might not make sense, but it's hella fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's not welcome. If you want to build a movement, we can't be gatekeeping. Yeah. Well, like for me, like I, I want no Harry Potter fans in my left. <laughs> I cannot separate the art from the uh, from the uh, author, so I can't play Hogwarts Legacy. But I will say my my history with Harry Potter is very interesting. So when I was growing up, when Harry Potter came out, my family was very evangelical, and so that was like the most satanic thing to ever be created, essentially, like in my wow. family's mind. So it was taboo. And finally, when I was an adult, I watched all of the Harry Potter movies. Uh, didn't read the books; they were okay, not bad. Um, yeah, you know, not too shabby. Um, but yeah, I, I can no longer separate the art from the artist, but if you like it, I don't think that that makes you a bad person. I think it makes you a more peaceful person if you can do that, because for me, like there's so much more art that I would enjoy if I could separate the art from the artist, although it kind of depends on like what their, uh, alleged crime was. Right. But you know, I guess it varies. Well, what also, do you mean, in, like, in the case are of you the trying game... to say, Mike, are you trying to carve out <laughs> something there, Mike, so someone can enjoy Adolf Hitler's paintings without separating <laughs> the art from the <laughs> artist? Because <laughs> 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 uh, y'all, y'all clearly not gonna let me have nice things, so let me just addre uh, <laughs> address all substantive points made. Um, I think there is a difference between um, supporting the art if the artist is still making that money and how they use that money. Like in the case mm -hmm. of R. Kelly, R. Kelly, when R. Kelly was out and the money the supporting of r kelly's career is using that money to run a whole conglomerate of foolishness of trapping and torturing women and things like that so i felt like in the case of r kelly um contributing to his making money and his doing well was literally contributing to the direct harm of people so i feel like you know that's a distinction in the case of i don't play nobody's video game so you know i love original I, I love you know harry potter independent of jk from before but i mean mm. I, to my knowledge, I've heard she isn't a part of this video game thing. She's um, she's not, which is also makes it interesting because like she didn't make the game herself, right? Like it's it, it's yes, it's her property, and I'm sure she's making money off of it. That yeah, she would so, get licensing fees and like royalties. Yeah, I'm sure there's licensing, sure. of course. Yeah, but she's not in there like programming the game, like or or you know making the. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> <Programming the game. laughs> she's too busy on Twitter. She does yeah. not know how to code. No, no, she does not know how to code. No. Yeah, I, but, um, to, to Harry Potter, Mike. Similarly, with um the the Christian issue. So the Bahamas is constitutionally Christian. So we have a thing called the Christian Council that needs to be disbanded. It's everything ruining our country. Anyway, mm -hmm. the Christian Council wouldn't movies have to be approved by the Christian Council, and the Christian Council was really against Harry Potter. Um, at first, and it was a lot to get it there. But you will see how my family was um grooming me to be a lawyer my whole life. I used to have to like present arguments, like make presentations to get something to be able to watch something or do something. So I made a whole presentation of my grammy about how harry potter is just the battle of good and evil and that's the same shit as everything else you gotta be watching all these other fairy tales and happily mm -hmm. ever afters i was like, ain't there witches in that ain't there this blah 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 seems like well my grandma's going points were made <laughs> <laughs> so i got to watch harry potter um i think i am a person i like the harry potter books i think the harry potter books are greater than the movies i'm not like a it's not the movies that I'm in love with, but I, I think the books were fantastic. And I don't care what nobody says. Um, and um, yes, I know she's, I, I, I know of all the, every problematic, bigoted thing that's in there. All that's true. I have no defense. Senator Jail. Um, and then for my original story, I was going to tell, because we were talking about spoilers. So when Harry Potter, this the last book came out, I was in Belgium. I was in Europe and I was in Belgium and it was like a holiday. And so like every bookstore was closed, but one. And I remember I like racing. I, did I push a child? to get the book i'm not and then i'm saying that i pushed it out but i would just say i was important to caution that i too was young myself i was only <laughs> i was only about 13 like so yeah i may have um pushed a child to get the book um because it was a frenzy in this one bookstore to get the book so i get it and then i go to the airport and i'm reading my book and someone just walks up to me this is again this is like the day after the book comes out someone walks up to me and like snape dies <laughs> like they're like yeah, oh, little that's little, wrong. In the airport, I'm wow. like, you evil son of a bitch. Like that right there. I looked in the <laughs> that's face. Terrible. Of yeah, the day after, but like book in my hand, just that's um, just wow. evil right there. That's so yeah. mean. That's sociopathic behavior. Like, why would you fucking do that to somebody? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially a child. That's like, weird. you go to a child. Be like, here's how this yeah, book ends. It, like, dickhead. Someone asked, "What's my favorite Harry Potter movie and book?" I think my book, my favorite book, is probably. Um, it's probably Half Blood Prince. I feel like that's not a popular 
But I like Half Appearance. I like the whole idea of Snape's book with all his. Uh, I like that coming back to play. It's just Snape just being powerful across generations. I love it. Look at that. He wrote mm, some shit. Half nice Blood book. Prince is that the name of the book? Sounds Binder? very uh, race science. Binder? Half Binder? Blood. Binder? Okay. The series. The series is kind of I will read this one of Times Square. You can. Like, <laughs> There's some quantum. Uh, <laughs> did uh, did Douglas Murray help her with that book? <laughs> <laughs> Went on Sam Harris's podcast. Hold on, wait. Before I let us move on, because someone had said it earlier, because someone said in the chat, they said, I'm giving real Hufflepuff energy, and I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I identify as a Gryffindor son in a Slytherin moon. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so what about the rest of you i'm assuming lance is a gryffindor too what are you I, I can't remember i remember taking one of those online things i wasn't snape i wasn't i don't think i was the cool one i like uh what's the cool one again i i can't is believe it that people isn't it isn't hufflepuff like the one that harry potter's in that's oh, what everybody wants. No, 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 no. Hufflepuff no, 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 no. is the one that Harry Potter's in? No. I mean, it's socially acceptable not to know the symbol, actually. Actually, it's, it's better to not know that. Now people are going to be like, yes, Mike's an ally. That's good. <laughs> like, I don't know what any of these words Potter. mean. Harry Potter is in Gryffindor. What are you mean, talking about? Yeah. Oh, Gryffindor. Oh, it's fuck. I would not have gone that. Hufflepuff's the nerdy one. That's what Ron Beasley's in. And then Harry Potter is in Gryffindor. There we go. I, I only read the third book. Fans. I only read the third book. This is the most contentious episode yet. <laughs> what am I? I don't know these things. Tell you me would what be I Gryffindor. Am. Harry, Harry so Potter. Potter. You're, 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 yeah. I don't know the you're difference, but it just was on my heart. I feel like David is Gryffindor. I think David's Ravenclaw. What? Oh, because Ravenclaw the traits. This, so like I think the, David's the, Ravenclaw. The, yeah. I think by using intelligence, think... learning, wisdom, and wit. Oh, okay. yeah. I think Mike is Gryffindor see the with a, a Gryffindor hmm. son with a Hufflepuff moon. That's what I'm giving Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what am I again? You know more than everyone else. You should give all of us something. Yes. Oh, I'm going to tell you what y'all are. I'm giving okay, yeah, uh, David Ravenclaw. I'm giving uh, Mike Gryffindor son Hufflepuff moon. Okay. I'm giving Bender. I'm giving Bender. I feel like Bender is pro. I don't know, Bender. I'm going to give Bender a Slytherin son and a Ravenclaw moon. And I'm going to give Lance is probably a Gryffindor son and a Slytherin moon like me. That's what I'm going. Oh, wow. Yeah, man, right. yeah I, think, this, I think that's right. Y'all, y'all assess that. The real people who know assess that in the comments. But I think how I'm do right. they how do they so determine cool. that in the book? Does Harry Potter whip out the it's, calipers it's a, and start measuring skulls? <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a hat. <laughs> <laughs> is that really? Is Wait, no, I'm joking. Is there <laughs> magical <laughs> calipers? <laughs> is there some magical hat that pulls on their heads? Oh my <laughs> god! You gotta be kidding me! I forgot about that. This book is all about race science. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Oh, I, I feel like I've read Harry Potter now. Shit. I feel like I know everything I need to know. <laughs> I never considered the fact that the hat was not using magic and was instead measuring skulls. That is... I can't ever look at Harry Potter the same. It's worse than I thought. I fucking hate oh it here. God. I hate it here so much. <laughs> so let me get this straight. Half-Blood Prince, a, a, a skull-measuring magic cap. <laughs> the, the goblin Jews running the bank. <laughs> And the author just happens to be a raging transphobe. Hmm. <laughs> oh no! Bender would have done for me! Like, Bender, god damn it! Like, I know, shit, yes! The bitch is a bigot! You literally know! Oh, There's a lot of shit in there! You ain't even really get to the real stuff, like what she was naming the black characters. Let's not get into that. Like, like, Wait, what? What is she naming the. I gotta know this now. What are the names of the black Wait, characters? Oh, um, oh she my also God. hates fat people. You can throw that one there. All the oh, evil people. I forgot fat. about that. Yeah. 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 Super fat phobic. It's a thing. It's a massive thing. A common she named, thing. <laughs> yeah, she named the black character Kingsley Shacklebolt. Mm -hmm. That's what? Right. Yep. Yep. She's a, she's the bitch is a bigot, right? Like, yeah. We Was know. this stuff obvious at the time or not till she became a transphobe? Did people start like oh. looking at her history? Like like how how recent did we people start children. realizing? You were kids. It's hard to no, like. No, kids. No, but like, but society. Like, uh, apart from the, I remember like back when it first came out, it was like stories about witchcraft and shit. That was garbage. But like, 
when was there when did the actual assessment or like reassessment of harry potter start was it when she became a transphobe or before that after anyone know? <laughs> okay, so some of some of the things that we've mentioned already, specifically the anti-Semitism present in the movies, that was already talked about a little bit or explored. Okay. Not not to the extent that everything Because it was like is. so obvious, right? Mm -hmm. Has anyone well, yeah. ever pointed out what I just uncovered, or is this something too with the magic <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has pointed that out. Just breaking news here. I just didn't cover something here. Are we just find some weird magic hat? Weird the sorting hat is what it was called. Um, oh, but David, answer your question. I don't know if you know this, but she uses a pseudonym called Robert Galbraith or something like that, which is also the same uh, name of an individual who used to do a whole bunch of, I think, really bad experiments uh, and was very anti-trans back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, she has, like, so Stephen King uses a pen name and then releases books and he did this just to show that will people still like my writing if they if they read me but don't know it's me and it turns mm. out yes they do they still buy his mm. books because they're still like it's good she's the opposite no one bought her other books so they had to reveal that that was secretly her so, people so they would start sell picking up sales yes it, oh, the exact, wow. and now she now it's, now it's just out there as the pen name that's hilarious that's interesting yeah. Did you? Did you? Uh, I don't know. This is a little just, bit like just googling J.K. Rowling <laughs> race science, like a normal person. Moment of what she's done to me. I do want to respond to Celeste. You're saying David never saw Harry Potter, Shrek, Disney. He had no childhood. You didn't I see grew Shrek. Up the, I grew up in the Disney? '90s. Actually, so I, 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 I may have seen How Shrek. Old is everybody? How much younger? I may have I seen now? Shrek. How old? And I have seen Disney movies, I'm, but I'm not late thirties. You know. Because y'all are aging exceptionally well for white men. I, I wanted to really give you all that because y'all say things sometimes that throw out a time frame. And I'm like, hmm, children. For me, it's, for me, it's jeans. My dad, my dad is like 71. He looks like he's like 55. It's it's insane. Oh, so wow. it's I'm just lucky in that sense. Yeah. I'm so, old as shit. I'm 35. Okay, so you're 35. Mm -hmm. Lance said late 30s, like a real diva. He didn't give me, he didn't oh, give Oh, yeah, no, I'm not. Birthday. I'm also late 30s. And Lance said, no, no one can know what day, what my actual no, birthday God, is. No. I love that. No, That's beautiful. No. No, I'll, I'll deal with that shit. How come? What, what's what's the what's the? So I know. Should I have been concealing my age this whole time, Lance? Is it gonna bite me? What, what's the reason? What's no, the... it was one of those things. At first, I didn't I didn't reveal it because I like when I first started actually getting worried about how I was blowing up online. Like, you yeah, know, well, my channel has more subs. I was like, oh, I don't want to get docs, so maybe I'll just like mm -hmm. start peeling things back a bit out of yeah. here. And then I just haven't <laughs> really changed that since. You know? I mean, just oh. look at our just look at our streamyard labeled <laughs> names here. Who's the only person whose last name we don't know? Right. That's a great point. Yeah. yeah. David Dole, Mike Figueredo, Matt Bender. Oh, so you all have your full names oh, on there. How, how do you pronounce your last name? I'm sorry. I don't want to mess it up. Olayemi uh, Oloran. Olayemi Oloran, Matt Binder, and Lance. <laughs> I love the surf. The surf is his TV. last name. <laughs> the surf TV is my last name. Wouldn't that be yeah. crazy to be like if if y'all watch Mad Men? Yeah, yeah. Mad Men right? Thank I haven't seen it. I haven't. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 of course. What if Lance was like Don Draper? Like if we actually got his last and we realized that like Lance is not who he says he is at all. Like we did the research. Oh, because he had like a completely. He runs a marketing house. company. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like uh, like Lance. Like Lance is like. I did, I did yeah. used to work in the film and television industry doing digital distribution. So I used to do digital distribution back in the day. Yeah, I've had. I don't know about y'all. I've had so many shitty jobs. I've worked as a dishwasher. I've worked in construction. I've worked at two like movie theater fast food chains. Uh, lots of lots. Of I was a dishwasher. Mm -hmm. I've no. I've nice. only ever been a lawyer. I'm so sorry to be the bourgeoisie over here. Um. Oh, <laughs> God damn. <laughs> I worked you know, never been a lawyer. In my in my defense, the U.S. government will not allow me to work. Wouldn't allow me to work any other on any other job. Right? Like I'm being shackled by USCIS. Um, but so okay. So Mike said 35. David, what'd you say? Late late 30s. Oh, you you two are okay. Okay, all right, all right. Madonna. Okay, Ben. If you follow me on Twitter, though, <laughs> if you follow me and I follow you, you, you can look at my Twitter profile and see. And I think how the age is there. Bender? How how old would you th do you think I am? Somewhere between thirty-two to thirty-five. Oh, okay, I'm thirty-six. Okay, check that out. Look at it. Um, no I one's, no one ever thinks I'm in my thirties. I'm always pe uh, people always peg me for much younger. You know what was crazy? <laughs> um, people be pegging me for older. I think because of my career, because of like the nature of my work, mm. they assume I'm older, and I I don't appreciate it. Um, and I wish they would stop doing it to me. <laughs> I, like they talk to me like I'm like. No, I'm actually a young bitch. That's so why I'm doing young bitch shit. You don't know, see this person. I'm like, I'm like, actually a like, young bitch. I'm a young bitch with an old bitch. Anyhow, I, I, 
thir- LA is like 32, 33. I'll beat your ass. I'm 29, bro. <laughs> I'm so like, yeah, I was going to say, like, you're like mid 20s, right? I think you said it before. Like 29. 29. Yeah. I, will be, I will be 30 in July. Be is that is that the youngest millennials? What's the millennial cutoff? Ninety six. Ninety six. Ninety six. That's the last millennials. Because I have a brother. That's the who's the Nintendo sixty four year, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that is correct. That's right, Lance. <laughs> that's how I know time in the nineties as yeah. a kid. It was the video game console that came out that year. That's how I know what year it was. PlayStation two thousand. Uh, Xbox yes. and GameCube two thousand one. Anyway, yep. yes. <laughs> you can go on forever. Xbox 360 2005. I'm with you, David. <laughs> Lance, somebody says that you do drag in Brazil. They're calling me Lance Santos. My word. I That's splendid. I, I I'll, 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 I'll be real with you. I, I have too much ADHD to have the patience that man has. I don't know how anyone could play that kind of a long game where it's like, at a certain point, I'm sorry, I couldn't just sit there and be like, <laughs> you're really buying this, all of you, the world? <laughs> we're, we're doing this? I'm strapping in? I'm an elected official? Hell yeah. I couldn't get that far. I would I would, I would, would break and, and give the game away so fast. I uh, Too many tells. Look at this. I'm a terrible liar too. I I can't. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Sam, you could see it in my face, like when I lie. It's I couldn't. I, I I what he does honestly takes talent. It's like it's fucked up, but it's almost impressive the way he does it. Did you guys did you guys see that video of someone asking him? Did you guys see that video of someone asking him who he thought was going to win this season of Drag Queen? We played yeah, that right before you came on. Actually, actually. we played that yeah, right yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I said ego, ego, and self preservation won't make me lie. Um, was the reason why I don't lie, just because my sister once said um, when I was a little kid, and it stuck with me my whole life. My sister Doon was like, <laughs> "This is the ego on being on Olur," and Doon was like. Um, lying is a sin, so why should I waste my sins on you? <laughs> like you and your feelings. Why would I be why I like would I be lying to you? Like and that's what I kind of like think that. to myself before I go to lie to somebody. I'm like, wait a second, who the fuck are you? I'm the star of my life show. I'm not gonna lie to you. But I think if I wanted to be a liar, I'd be a great liar, I'm sure. I'm not sure <laughs> I could be a manipulative witch if I wanted to be, but you know, don't don't I'm trying not to be evil, not to use your powers for evil. I would probably <laughs> be I would probably be a bad liar. Until I convinced myself the lie was true, I'm pretty sure I could convince. Oh, I myself. definitely come to believe mm. the lie. Yeah. Oh, I definitely. I could, but I would have to do that first. If I knew it was a lie, still I couldn't do it. But if I just to myself, tra- like looked in the mirror, and was like, "This is the truth. This is what happened. This is what happened." Like over and over, I'd eventually probably believe it and then tell the lie easily. <laughs> do you think that's what that's what the right does? Like right wing media. Like Stephen Crowder wakes up in the morning. He he knows he's <laughs> he's so doesn't believe the shit he's saying. But he like Crowder might be a bad example because Crowder <laughs> comes across as someone who would lie to your face happily, knowing it's a lie, and not give a shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've I heard would... though. Like people that know him behind the scenes, apparently he like he he doesn't believe what he talks about. Most of them guys do. Most of them do. Alex Jones yeah, is on the record don't. saying it's a pure entertainment what he does. He doesn't can, believe can, the yep. thing he can says. We, Andrew can we talk you. about that? I think about that very yeah. often where this like implicit like silent rule that you're not supposed to like say how people are like full of shit. Like I feel like I know a lot of people as someone who bears on like right wing stuff. I know a lot of commentators, a lot of people, a lot of like, that say a bunch of things that are completely inconsistent with everything that they believe and live their life in real life and they will casually tell you about it like you'll go out to let you know what i mean and they'll tell you and it's like but somehow i'm in some implied contract that you can't say it so you have to sit on thing and like you're like you don't live like that you don't believe that shit and we just i've noticed that like we we just kind of have to rock with it y'all ever had that experience where you just did you just know see the, the, did you see the cnn whistleblower that just came out recently like attesting to what you just said as being a real phenomenon he used to i think work for project veritas and a bunch of other right-wing outfits and he was just straight up like yeah uh they've told me before like the getting the the, the views the clicks and the outrage is way more important than if it's true so get I, out there get out there and get the get the clicks get out there and get the the fucking the the outrage i know the amount of people i'll know like they that are like fully like in real life they sitting now talking to you they are they are gay and will be out speaking literally the most anti LGBT rhetoric da 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 blah 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 like and all these things I'm like uh, or and and never mind the 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 aspect of who people work for and what they actually do and where their allegiances are and what's going on there um I I just find that it's very difficult to contend in that world like if you're being if you're honest you know what I mean you live a life just to me a lot of the things you'll see. It's like if y'all found out that in my free time I was like dating the, the president of the police union and then like <laughs> right? and then like 
would they would they would the other people just be expected not to say that like they're not supposed to because you know you learned these things in the personal you know what i mean like outside into the world it's like oh you're not supposed to bring that into you know like it's unprofessional but at the same time it's like but we're we're talking to the public we're like convincing a public and galvanizing around, people around these things as though you believe in it and it is completely inconsistent but it would be unprofessional or whatever it is or some kind of faux pas or like breaking of a rule it seems like some people out. are able to they're able to separate their career from what they like what they believe which you know i get in for some jobs like you know i used to work in marketing i fucking hated it but but you know for the job i had to do marketing and then i thank god left that job but like it's it's for this kind of work where you are public facing where you're supposed to be educating people for you to put on a character or put on opinions that you don't actually have just to fill a role i think is very not just dishonest it's just disgusting like you, you are it's sad too then again mm -hmm. if someone's actually a right winger but they're a left winger on i don't know why they would there's no money in this but if they're like secretly a right winger <laughs> but they're, but they're a left winger you know in media then who gives a shit like you're you're benefiting society you're educating people i don't care but again that, that doesn't exist we talked about earlier like there's no money to be made there you can't no one goes from you know uh the right to the left or like or the, in the sense that like for money or no one mm -hmm. goes uh no one pretends to be on the right and just attacks the right like that doesn't like the way you know the jimmy door types do because there's no mm -hmm. money there but it, it is weird that for some reason yeah people are able to do this and they're able to live their entire like dave rubin is a gay conservative media figure and he talks oh, okay. about the people in his circle like Matt Walsh just came out about how terrible it is for for two men to adopt. Dave Rubin mm -hmm. just adopted two kids. Like this is it's this is crazy that he is like <laughs> he he puts he he himself into this. Like Ben Shapiro is supposed to be his friend, and yeah. he won't even go to his own barbecues. Like I was watching that, I was like, <laughs> I I normally want to rip into you or make fun of this, but I was like, this is just sad. You're like looking at him, and he's just like, uh, I'm not gonna go because how gay is it gonna be? And he's like, it's gonna be normal. It's just gonna be normal barbecue. Normal. He's like, yeah, but like how gay? That's a, that, by the way, I was just gonna say that's a real Zero thing. To gay. That's a real thing. Like I have white friends that do that. You invite them to something and they ask you how many white people are gonna be there if it's gonna be a black thing. Or <laughs> what, I swear to, what's, swear to God, what's no joke. The no joke. No, they do that. Oh God. God. Why is, is God. I swear to God on a regular basis two, or like two my friends. People, three, my birthday, <laughs> on my birthday dinner in July, my friend's boyfriend was white and that man faked sick right before dinner. They rather than be at the table with all our black asses just discomfort <laughs> like my man was like I can't. I can't do it. it's a regular it's a people do you like that in real life and expect you to maintain the friendships like it's just okay to be like they're like uh they're gonna be and i always think it's interesting right because in a world where marginalized people are constantly like talking about the lack of inclusion and what it is to be in a white world and yada 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 and being dismissed every and day it's so interesting the very people that will dismiss and, and minimize what that is to live in a society where you have to go into white america at whole like everyone's always white around me but if you have to spend one evening with your with your black friends like then it's like how am i gonna do that i'm like well i was at my white ass class all day my white ass <laughs> yeah that's I, that's wild like yeah once someone says that I, I guess you don't invite them back again right like that's you can't really come yeah. back from that like it's ridiculous it's, it's like all right let's re-examine this friendship we have yeah, to we're at 10 31 so oh, that's right should... you got your thing let's do our no. cancel and cancel yeah so I I nominate, uh, and plug I'd your like uh, plug your thing as well Oh, yeah. Also, for Tea Time with Olay this week, someone should pull it up. Um, y'all know LOL Overruled. He's TikTok famous, so I bet that y'all do know him. Um, if someone wants to I show recognize him his face. TikTok. I saw his face before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that he is looks my, familiar. That, yeah. He is, I think he has like almost a million followers on TikTok. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Alex is TikTok famous for real. Okay. Huh. Yeah. So Alex is going to be my guest. Uh, it's going to be great. I'm going to be all in his business. I, I put up on my Instagram, like, ask questions like what questions y'all want me to ask alex and i just want to say this he needs to sue all his fans for sexual harassment i i am a woman with big breasts and i've never seen sexualization like what y'all did to this man <laughs> like y'all need to wow. get his alex, alex needs wow. justice they treat his mustache like they treat my titties and that's crazy 
I was reading some of the comments. I was like, wow. Okay. It is, it is wow. Comments, like, he's so hot. <laughs> I mean, you okay. know, he's a nice looking yeah. man, but like people are going crazy. Yeah. So if I did not see the comments. I, I put the link. I put the, yeah, they're, yeah, they're hype, right? So if y'all Take want ride, to, yo. y'all can talk to Alex yourself. It's going to be great. So someone dropped the link. I put it in our group chat. If y'all want to put the link in the chat for people for tea time, it's going to be excellent. I hope y'all turn out in droves. It will be fun. I'm asking ridiculous questions because Alex is already my friend. He's my work husband, if y'all didn't know that. Um, so yes, that's my plug awesome. for tea time. Amazing. Okay, now to canceling and uncanceling. Bender, you might have been, you might have not been here when I when we put up. So Jimmy, right now on the block, on the chopping block, Jimmy Fallon is up for cancellation. Mm, and, nominate Jimmy uh, Fallon. Yes. That was that was last. Terms. And George Santos yeah. is up for uncancellation. Yeah. No, we're not. <laughs> I have a new George nominee. Santos, also. That's for sure. I say we cancel Harry Potter. <laughs> I feel like the revelations <laughs> on this show. Like, I do feel like that's, Harry Potter's already Harry canceled, Potter's though. Canceled. Yeah. 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 It's already canceled. I think I, I think we have to okay. Like, that's like JK, JK Louis C.K. <laughs> I, I, I'd be like Louis C.K. is canceled. It's already happened, you know. Yeah, J, J.K. Rowling's right, so canceled at least. Cancel, you know? Yeah. Uh, hmm. No, I Jimmy don't Fallon. Why? Why are you not? Why are you not canceling Jimmy Fallon, Matt? Because he's not really in the news right now. I feel like there's other people worthy of it right now. We're not thinking of. I mean, what has he, he done recently? Pass. He didn't. He didn't get in trouble for all the NFT things. Think of all the thousands of people who lost money from the NFTs. The NFTs alone. Well, you can not suffer any consequence for this. And just no, imagine his face, Matt, and you'll want to cancel him. Fine, the fake fine, laugh, fine. the slap him on the desk. Made, I've been you know, peer pressured into canceling Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you have someone better, you can bring him up. I, I just can't think of anyone else. I have someone for sure, but it's a temporary cancellation, not a permanent cancellation. Right, no, this is a permanent up? one. Two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. Uh, Mark temporary. Hamill. Mark Hamill. What so did he do? So the reason why I want to cancel him is because oh, for the he second liked the JK Rowling tweet, right? He played he's yeah. playing footsie with JK Rowling and transphobia, which is why he gets a temporary cancellation. But he only gets so many oopsies before it's like, okay, we know what the fuck you're doing. So to give everyone context, so he liked a tweet before from JK Rowling where she was being explicitly transphobic, but yeah. he apologized and said, Okay, I was ignorant. I didn't know that she was referring to transphobia. Now, this last week, he did it again where a trans woman treated, uh, tweeted at JK Rowling and said, I'm more of a, tr a woman than you'll ever be. And then JK Rowling responded saying, Cita Citation needed. Now, he acknowledged once people started blowing up, Okay, you're, you're, you're liking her tweets again. Um, okay, sorry, I wasn't trying to produce or, or um, promote transphobia, but his excuse overall was fucking stupid. It's like, no, I just like the tweet because I like when people speak their truth to power. That is, uh, well, I didn't know who he was, but now I'm, I want to cancel him just off the strength. I can't fucking stand when white people take that kind of truth to power. Really? Really? This white woman doesn't even like. Truth it's a power. combination of truth to power and speak their truth. It's like, this is J.K. Rowling. She's a billionaire. Like, she's punching down on trans people constantly. How is she pe speaking her truth to power? So that irritated me because, okay, I get that he's still willing to engage with us. And he still knows that, you know, transphobia is bad ostensibly. But at the same time, you still keep liking her, her fucking tweets. Oh, do you not realize that she is a vicious, yes, vicious does. bigot. Yes, don't even shoot him yeah, that bad. There's no know. world in which, like, you think you think someone could say some racist shit, and I click like on it because I'm like, it's not about the racism. It's about mm -hmm. truth. Mm -hmm. No, he likes that shit. <laughs> what are you talking about? No one looks at no bigoted shit that they think is bigoted and go, well, it's important to speak the truth. <laughs> yeah. What? You think the bigoted shit is the truth? It's the messenger. Fucking... Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's the messenger too. So I I'm just I'm tired of the bullshit. Like trans people are in a fight for their lives, literally. And if you if you want to be an ally, you've got to go all in like this whole one foot in one foot out. Uh, it, it's irritating me because it feels so disingenuous and I expected better from Mark Hamill. Um, so this is why I say temporary cancellation, two strikes. OK, you're fine. But three strikes, you're you're permanently canceled, in my opinion. I, I will support doing, your I temporary see. cancellation. I think you make a good argument. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, uh, only a Sith. I, deal, deal, deal I will allow absolute. it. Just <laughs> I'm voting for it. Purely I'm also not. I'm not voting in for it uh, out of self interest because I still want to. You're still Jimmy Fallon. Fallon? I'm voting yeah. for it because it's if we don't let him cancel, 
if we don't cancel him, y'all will cancel Harry Potter. So I'm voting. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter's already canceled. I'm gonna beat you up, Lance. I swear to God. You <laughs> <laughs> hey, right. live in New York. I'm gonna get that video ready right now. Ooh, you both live in New York. You can meet up and roll it out. We can we can put it on episode nine. Um. But yes, okay, so we're canceling Mark Hamill. There we go, and Mark Hamill canceled. And you said he will not allow for George Santos to be uncanceled on any show he's on. No, he should oh, not I'll, be I'll disagree. I'll disagree with that one as well. I, I don't want George Santos to be uncanceled. No, I don't want him to be uncanceled. I just think it's funny how much he's gotten away with, minus, yes. you know, all the Amazing. terrible people he, or all the people he's terribly hurt. Like, <laughs> let's not forget that. But uh, it's just crazy what the guy's gotten away with. But uh, who, who should be uncanceled? Hmm. This one's always hard because it's like we got to think about who's canceled. We got to think about, right. are they, you know what I mean? Like most people that are that are canceled usually did some pretty bad shit. Um, yeah, and aren't even most cases actually canceled. They're probably fine. Like right, <laughs> still making their millions. I don't know. Yeah, it's difficult. I I have nothing that comes to mind. I'm always in like a fucking mentality, videos, like, so it's like, okay, cancel this one next. But like, we I never think canceled. Will that happened? Somebody infinite content. I think that happened, right? We did that like in the first episode, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah we that was like the one of the first. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Who's, who's canceled? That we. I say who? we uncancel the A and W root beer bear who we all made wear pants. Do you guys remember? I, do you guys I, know I, what I, have, about I have seen this as well. Yes. <laughs> I saw something yeah. about this. <laughs> well, that's all there is to it. So then. basically, A and W <laughs> made a joke. Uh, the, you know, the root beer company. They made it. Apparently, they have a mascot that's a bear that wears a shirt but no pants. And so they basically parodied the M and M's announcement, like word for word, same sort of graphic, saying, uh, <laughs> "Our pantless bear has caused a lot of issues, so he will now be wearing pants." And Fox <laughs> Business did not realize it was a joke or a parody. Oh my and God. they ran a legit segment about how the woke mob came after the <laughs> A&W root oh. beer bear and made him wear pants. How did I not see this and cover it? What the fuck? Yeah, right? That's amazing. Yeah, that, seems, that seems like a, a rational national story. And yeah, I should have covered story. this. Both of you. Yeah. <laughs> I would have been on that like stank on shit. Like, that's, <laughs> the weirdest that's thing the is actually, like. the, the, the worst thing actually is them conflating the issue because they said, oh, the woke mob came for M&M's and now they're coming for the A&W root beer bear. But that's not what happened. The people who they consider woke did not care about the M&M's. It was their own viewers who hated the M&M's so yeah. much that it made it, them change the M&M's. They the building the whole time. <laughs> Shout out to uh, uh, RM Brown did a video on on that, and and he the only video he could find where the so called left or liberal media was covering the Eminem thing was, it was like one of the morning shows on I forget what show it was, but mm. they uh, just brought it up because uh, Maya Rudolph I think is now the spokesperson for Eminem. It's like there was no outrage about like the Eminem changing what no one fucking cares except for the right like <laughs> no one gives a shit, <laughs> no yep. one gives a shit about the marketing of chocolate companies like who cares. So yeah, yeah, I, I, mean, I love Aaron Brown. I can only Brown. masturbate to M and M's who wear high heels. Damn it! <laughs> I took that away from you. You used to have a proper country, Matt. Now you lost that. You Unbelievable. I see. I, I, I felt unrepresented because there wasn't a leather daddy M and M character. That's true. I, I think eh? what this segment has shown us is that is confirmed is that cancel culture really ain't real, like they say, because everybody that is canceled seems rightfully canceled every week. <laughs> like mm -hmm. they're like. Woo! <laughs> Who everybody seems like they were rightly convicted. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> it's real hard to come up with somebody to uncancel. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the justice system works when it comes to cancellations. Well, I, someone asked if we could cancel the cops. They've been canceled. Look who's here. Fuck the cops. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. Where were you like the last fucking 10 years? <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> yeah. I got what? There we go. A and W uncanceled because Fox canceled them. All right. Uh, yeah. I, okay. I'm very. Di I'm disappointed. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. True. I, I accept all the right. ruling. That's all. I'll hey, say. we're not always right. gonna knock it out of the park every yep, week. Folks. I know. Hey, I, mm -hmm. uh, group consensus. It's a good way to bring up a story though, that, that we didn't touch on. So uh, yeah. Like yeah. This is good. This is good. All right, everybody, go find me on Tea Time with Olay. That's where I'll be in three minutes. There you go. Uh -huh. I linked in the chat uh -huh. earlier. Yeah. People check it out. It's gonna be great. Y'all should go get your boy. Are we, are we and I will get to all the super chats once people uh, drop out of here. All right. All right. See you all next week. See you, everybody. Bye, see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.
see you next Thursday. Oh, I, let me drop really quick to your audience here. Both who who, who yes, is airing yes. this? The surfs on Twitch I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm airing surfs this on are. Twitch. I am. I'll have the vod out tomorrow. Okay, yeah, me too. I, I usually just lift it from Lance because his version doesn't go up on YouTube, so I have no problems mm. with. Uh... It goes up on podcast. <laughs> oh, you can Everywhere take mine. I don't give a shit. <laughs> no, I think I think if I take yours, it'll be a duplicate according to YouTube, and they'll get angry. Oh, uh, I see. No, I take David's. I just add the intro. Yeah, add like yeah, add like an intro or something to oh, it. Oh, I'm not gonna. Yeah. I just I don't have time to do that. Okay. <laughs> I just throw it right up. <laughs> <laughs> so youtubecom slash Binder if you're not subscribing to be, subscribe to me there already, and twitchtv slash Binder if you're not following me there already, and of course you can follow me on Twitter at Matt Binder. There you go, and I link to okay. everyone below the video. Perfect. All right, my friend. God bless. I got to say, I had a lot of fun this week because I fell into this whole Harry Potter thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I feel like I'm going to cut that way. into a separate video, the Harry Potter debate. If that I was a good yeah, debate. That, that, if that I ever become the Harry Potter calipers guy, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to upload that right now. Yeah, that's going up on Twitter. All right, bye, everybody.